God, please let there be a headline. SNL writer says she wants like Andrew Tate's body or something. I hate you. I hate you so much. I need health insurance, buddy. They're starting to find research now about ALS that the people who are most prone to get it are people who garden a lot. How did Stephen Hawking get it so low? His, his mom just had him out there with his face as a fucking rake. <laughs> And I just eventually splinter it, look around. There's no cops. Get back in the car, drive safely home. I do not recommend this to any child Don't out do there. It. <laughs> I heard her while she was, like, shaking me around. My OB, who's, like, this very, very Italian woman, she just goes, that's a big baby. <laughs> Chris. Chris, really? You're disgusting. <laughs> if these bitches knew... If these bitches knew, right, in hot faces on your comments, if they knew how disgusting you are, what I have to deal with, they would not look at you the same way, honey. Hi, I'm Slushy. I'll, don't let me forget this. Yeah, if I get too high. I mean, I'm... I'm, I'm going to be. You will forget it. For I know. I, I got pocket. fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> What's up, everybody? <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos coming to you live from the Slam Magazine. Slam your mama magazine. We got Mr. Mike Cannon with us as always. And in the ones and twos in the background, we got John the father and we got Vito Baby Teeth. And we have our first female guest. If we have our first female guest ever in Chrissy Chaos history, but we have had some pussies on here before. Rosebud Baker. Thank you. Wow. What an intro. There you go. And first I'm, female, but still a baritone singer. <laughs> so yeah. it works. Let me tell you about Rosebud. Let me tell you who Rosebud Baker is, okay? In addition, in addition to being, you know, a great comedian, a new mother, a woman. Um, <laughs> slash hero. Slash hero. Writer for SNL. Woman all in America. that stuff. Great person. She's also a person that just, you know, I was having a, a really good day. I felt really confident and good about myself three days ago. I really felt nice. The sun was out. I had a nice workout. I felt like, you know what? I'm connecting with people. I feel good. Rosebud, one of Rosebud's close friends is a woman named Sydney Washington, another great comedian, absolutely beautiful girl, right? Everybody, lesbian, right? So, <laughs> yeah. so beautiful girl. So, so we all know that. We all know that. I know that. I all know that. Sydney w goes to the bathroom at the comedy club we were at. And I just said, as kindly as kind can be with not a hint of sexual energy attached to it, even though she is beautiful. I said to Rosebud, I said, Sydney Washington is so beautiful. And she goes, it's because of guys like you, she's gay. <laughs> <laughs> then went back to her club soda. And I was like, oh my God. And I slowly left and didn't say goodbye to anyone. And I was upset. <laughs> you went around the corner and the next time I saw you, you were like, do you want to come on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You didn't really expound on that. <laughs> you, like, you got mad. Yeah, I was immediately. Like you thought I was mad at you and then offered me a spot on the yes, podcast. I was like, I texted Mike <laughs> about an hour after. I was like, you know who should have on Rosebud? <laughs> <laughs> immediately. He's like, she'd be good, right? Yeah, dude. I mean, just to the heart. I was like, oh my God. I do like how that revealed that Rosebud thinks homosexuality is a choice. Yes. <laughs> well, my sister <laughs> fucked a comic and now she's oh, yeah, gay. That's true. There it is. <laughs> yeah. There it is. Now she's, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, in fair, and in fairness to Rosebud, <laughs> in fairness to Rosebud, I, I grab this, you know, even though I get it, she, before the pod started, she wanted a coffee and we had an extra black coffee. I said, here, here's a coffee. Do you need milk? And then she said, no, I don't. I said, well, if you do, use your tips. <laughs> and laughed and it bombed. And she was just like, this is why I said the comment to you about Sydney Washington. So why don't you just turn on the camera because I have to get home to my family, you piece of shit. So noted. No. Hello. She likes no milk. It coffee. reminds her of her there exes. You go. That's true. And also, I don't breastfeed. I have a job. And, yeah. Let's be honest. Yes, exactly. Do you, are you going tonight to SNL? No. Is no. there no SNL tonight? Two weeks off. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I don't know the sketch. No, it's all right. Um, do, I. do you, uh, how you were on it? You are a writer for SNL for how many years now? Three. Wow. <laughs> First season as a wow. parent though, right? First season as a parent. Yeah. What are you going to do if they put you on the cast? Are um, you going to do it? That's not, I don't think that's like going to happen. I feel like you could. I mean, because, like, well, listen, I mean, 50th anniversary is next year. 
So, so no I don't see them. I don't see them making any trades. Yeah, but maybe they'll look for somebody that's the same age as the anniversary. Oh yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lauren brings me yeah. on as his only elder. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. I confidently, I confidently told my agent last week because you know our great friend Shane Gillis hosted all of it. Nate Bargatze, now Rami Youssef is hosting. Yeah. I said I think I have a shot to host it next year, and he said it's the fiftieth anniversary. I said I have no shot. <laughs> Yeah, why do you think I'm they're a, having all these comics on? Yeah, they're like, who else? Who yeah. else? Before yeah. the fiftieth, we burn yeah. through before they're like, Timberlake. Jesus, not for the, they're like, not for the fiftieth guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah I, uh, but that, but it is it is cool to see like SNL is always. I think like people right with Saturday Night Live, you'll hear everybody's favorite cast. You always hear the same thing was when they were young, right? Yeah. Was when they were teenagers. Right. But I do feel as an adult now, like oh, close to forty, that the last like. Eight weeks of SNL has been some of the best it's it's been. I mean, yeah. I, been, I personally think it's been amazing. Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, I all the stuff that I feel like the audience hasn't been as on board with, like the it, the live audience hasn't been because they're on too board. busy protesting for to free Palestine, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so they're exhausted. <laughs> it's very like I just feel like we're missing with the live, but the people at, at home, home are, are liking it, right? But it's like I never fucking know. It really depends on like how good of a week you're having. So like your your memory of the show is just very much what you felt like right. while you were working. Mm, right. You know what I mean? Do they do they get the audience that that's a pure lottery for audience or do they go to Antifa protests to try to get yeah. their audience? <laughs> in? Yeah. It's crazy to me how much like people the people that like love the show, they are it's crazy how much they love the show. Like yeah. they right. like they sleep outside. It's big right. deal. Every I forget every Friday I come out and there's like a line of people that are sleeping on the street, basically. Rosebud thinks their fans are just the migrants. They're just <laughs> 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 I'm like, thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Thanks. Thank He's you. like, I just came in from Venezuela. <laughs> 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 They're handing you a baby. You know? <laughs> Vito baby teeth has something to say. Listen, look at his look at how small his teeth are when he talks to you. Yeah. And tell me if you're looking into the mouth of your Three month old baby. Oh my god, you're like in between veneers. I I, I have two baby teeth in my in my mouth. Oh, so yes. do I. You do. You do. I swear oh. to god. I see him. I swear to god. Way back here. Wow. Oh my god. Does your husband feel like a pedophile? Wow. Lover? Yeah. Yeah. There and there's no big teeth growing in. Oh my. Yeah. And mine have I have big teeth stuck up here. Mine mine are just like this is what you got. We're yeah. not giving you big ones. Wow. Yeah. Yes, I've so never met another person that has that. Look at that. What a connection. Too That's bad you wild. guys are both married. Yeah. Yeah, because that's a great reason to fuck somebody. No, that would actually, yeah. that's a reason to keep you two separated. That yeah. is not something we want to progress. Dude, if I had, if there was a third adult walking around the streets of New York with baby teeth, I'd kill it. <laughs> so, so what do you got, Vito? I slept outside of SNL. You did? Yeah, for like forty hours. Whoa. Forty hours? Waiting did you fast? For the show or just that's where you were living? <laughs> uh, it was for uh, Donald Glover. Oh, oh okay. Ago. And then it was when I worked at Sirius, so every hour I put up an update. Got it. Wait, the, you worked at Sirius? Yeah, I worked for Bennington at Sirius. Oh, and so then, why didn't you just like hit somebody up and go to the show? Because I wanted to. I wanted to try to like do the. Oh, sleep you, out. this was, was like, like an experiment. Yeah, I was like, let me see what it's like. I'll update. I'll like update along the way. I did forty hours, um, and it was uh, it was awful. Like I yeah. don't know why they think this is a good idea because by the time I saw the show. I felt like I was dying. Yeah. Like right. sleeping. Like I realized how bad the homeless problem is when I slept outside for 24 hours and I thought I was going to fucking kill somebody yeah. by the end of it. What month right. of the year was it? It was the end of the season. So the weather was fine. So it was okay. like May 6th or something was yeah. when I was out there. Yeah. Dude. No, I can't. Every, t every time we have a dress, because that's always the dress audience, right? No, like, I got to go to the live show. You slept outside for the live show? Somebody yeah. tricked you. No, I, wanted to go, <laughs> I, wanted, I didn't want to do the dress. I wanted to go to the live. They gave me the choice. That's wild. I mean, I can't imagine. Okay, well then, all right. You think it would be better to go to the dress? Well, I think it What's would be better What's the dress show? Us. Can you explain to the audience what the dress show is? <laughs> I know what it is, yeah, but explain the to them. dress rehearsal. So, yeah. like, you know, I... It's called the dress show in the biz. the people that are sleeping outside are going to the dress rehearsal, and then the live show people have tickets. So the dress is always a shitty audience, and then... Well, not always, but pretty well, much. No, but, I mean, think about the timing. Just the dress, that's way less of a turnaround. Like, I got to go home for basically a whole day and sleep after. Right, yeah. But they give you the choice when you get to the front of the line, and they're like, do you want to go Do you want to stay outside for another two hours? No, no, you don't stay outside. You go home. Oh! Right. So at, like, 7 a.m., so they come over to you 7 a.m. on Saturday... 
and they're like, okay, do you want to do dress or do you want to do live? And then they say, come back at this time uh -huh. to wait on another line, and you're still not guaranteed a spot at the show. Did you see my eyes just glaze over in the middle of that <laughs> explanation? I, yeah. I truly, I feel like I've been explained this so many times, and I don't even, I just always go like, beep, beep, beep. In my I head. feel like, though, yeah, like uh, it, it seems like that would. That's not the best way to get an audience. The only reason no. to go through that is for the bit. Yeah. Like, that only makes sense if you're doing that and reporting back to Bennington. But if you're some ass here from Michigan for a four-day vacation <clears throat> and you spend 40 of those hours sleeping on a steam grate, you should be thrown into the Great Lakes. <laughs> dude, what would have been a great bit if you were like, you know, you really wanted it and Bennington like was like, listen, dude, there's nothing I can do. We love you. But, like, the, your only option is to go out and wait. And you wait the entire 40 hours and then they come to you and be like, we've had the ticket since Friday. <laughs> 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 and they film themselves the like with yes. the tickets and like you just sweating it out out there. That's well, the way to they do know, it. Like Wally like comes on the show sometimes, so like they ha we have a relationship. But I really just was like, I'm gonna fucking go for this thing I've heard about my whole life. Yeah. Right. And like, but people around me were like, this is the only way for them to get tickets. So like right. these college kids right behind me, they like stole a couch from a few blocks away, brought it over. To the street, tried got to sleep bed on bugs, that. and then came to Thirty Rock. <laughs> right, right, cool. Yeah, well, that's what it is, man. Yeah. I mean, so, so yeah, so that that's a pretty cool job. Um, speaking of cool things, I went to the Ghostbusters premiere last night. You're welcome. What? Yep, I did. I went there, and then here's how it works: the Ghostbusters premiere. I was telling, I took my stepson Tristan. Nice. Yeah. So my daughter Delilah, I take her to everything. Right. Yeah. I, I, Tristan, you know, a lot of times when I'm doing things. Tristan will be with his dad on the weekends. So this time it's like on a Thursday, I was like, you know, I just took Delilah to the Knicks game. You know, my little one, Violet's too small anyway. So I was like, I'm going to take Tristan. Can I give so, you a pound for that? I think that's go. great. Yeah. I really so, do. So, so I take Tristan and, I'm, you know, we're leaving. And Delilah's like, where are you guys going? I was like, oh, we're going to uh, a, a movie premiere. And she was like, why wasn't I asked? And I was like, because you came with me last time. So now I'm taking your brother. She was like, so I guess I'll just cry in my room all night because my father doesn't love me. <laughs> <laughs> and then Dead Serious walked up the stairs with her piggy and blankie, and Jazz was like, she was pissed the whole night. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And then yeah. so 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 we go, and I was telling Tristan the entire time, I was like, dude, this is like a movie premiere. Like the original cast will be there. The because he's watched all the movies. I was like, the 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 you know, the current cast will be there. Like, this is the red carpet premiere. Like, you're gonna come on the red carpet with me. It's gonna be insane. So there is wild bumper to bumper traffic. Like can't I basically, we get there five minutes after they close the red oh. carpet for just the cast. They let us take a picture with the Ghostbusters mobile, which was cool, but we don't walk the cast. And then we get there. I'm like, it's going to be so cool when the cast comes into this theater and they talk to us and then they're going to show the, the movie. And then I didn't realize that it was such a big movie premiere that they were premiering it in three theaters, theater one, theater two, theater three. Theater one was for the cast and their family. Theater two was for just idiot fans like me. And no. theater three was for the industry <laughs> so we got to see it in theater too and then to make it all worse there was like these kind of shitty seats Zack Ryder from the WWE the biggest man in professional wrestling history sat right in front of my stepson and he couldn't see <laughs> <laughs> and, wait was there yeah. was there like a step and repeat for like the fans that was just like was there like a fucking place for you guys to take pictures where you felt like you were industry well no so the only <laughs> did the they th do like a fake out no out? they the only <laughs> Even no, the decency. he got a picture in front of the actual Ghostbusters mobile. That, that was on the red carpet. Like that we had to like security through. So that was cool. But like the, I was, I was literally amping this up so much. Like you are not going to believe what I'm about to do for you. <laughs> and, and, and then it was like, none of that happened. But here's what I will say about my stepson. Why I'm, I'm happy this kid. Cause he, t he said, I was like, I'm sorry. At the end, I was like, I'm sorry about, you know, we didn't, the, these things I said were going to happen didn't happen. And he was like, all I wanted to see was the movie. You wanted to do the other stuff. And I was like, good for you, dude. You reminded that. me that I'm a shallow, narcissistic yeah. piece yeah. of shit. Yeah. And I appreciate it. But yeah. you know what? So is your father. <laughs> <laughs> no. There's two things that's happening, though, is one, you want to show him the best time. Yeah. And two, you also want to show him your juice. Yeah. Right. right? So you yeah. do want to get there and be like, look at this. Isn't this yeah. cool? We get yeah. to do all this shit. So it is immediately yeah. like kind of blue balls to get there. Yeah. And nothing, none of it happens. No, you know yeah. what? I'm at a great place right now in parenting, step parenting part, because like I'll take Tristan, little Tristan to stuff and then like text his dad, not even text jazz, like text his dad the pics and this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. And his dad is just so 
thankful. And I know his dad would do that for my kids. So I appreciate That's awesome. it. His dad's like big into weightlifting. So I know like he's going to take my daughter deadlifting someday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't yeah. that terrifying with her ability to hold a grudge? I know. <laughs> yes. You know what? The first time I met her was at your, was at Crew's birthday party. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. that, and she came into, there was like a, a little like pool house or whatever. Yeah. And there were adults in the pool house. It was hot as fuck. And we were all just chilling in there. And she came in and she was like, she like burst through the door and she just went like, and then sat on a couch as far from the, the other adults that were in the room as possible and just sat there silently. Yeah. And we were all like, hey. She was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> Let me gather myself for but a moment. Yeah, it was really like she needed a yeah. minute yeah. to yeah. like gather her thoughts. Yeah. Delilah embodies the Snoop Dogg line of step up in this motherfucker, just a swing in my hair. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, she does it. literally does that yes. wherever she walks so in. So where li we moved, we had a really nice house on Staten Island and then we, we sold it because we thought we were going to upgrade like neighborhood and community in Queens and like these things didn't happen yet. So we're like living in like a rented house that like is a roof over our head and like nice, but like not like our Staten Island house. And the other day Delilah was like, when is the podcast going to pick up? Oh I was my like, God. <laughs> and I was like, what are you talking about? She was like, when are we going to get out of this house? When and I was is like, Mike going to start selling like, tickets? I'm a results person. <laughs> I was like, Jazz, this, I was like, Delilah, this is four bedrooms. Like, what do you, this is like a legitimate house, like in a nice neighborhood. She was like, yeah, but what we had was better. So when is the podcast going to pick up? <laughs> And I was like, I don't know, maybe if your mother would get on the spin bike. <laughs> no. Um, where do you guys so live? Where funny. do you and your husband live? Uh, we live on, uh, why, did, why was I about no, what's to give the address? exact address? <laughs> yes. I was about to do that. Um, no, we live on 20th and 1st. Do you like, like it over there? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Does he like fine. it? Everybody in my building is like 102 years old, you know. That's the best, though. They're all just like dying. That's literally the best because it's what- It's the best, except if you're in a rush to go to work, you gotta get, you gotta like help four people to get out of the building. Like it's like the amount of wheelchairs <laughs> yeah. I've fucking taken down with my stroller. But older people will protect you. You, the bottom line they is can't. when you're a parent- well, No, 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 when you you're a parent- in front of the danger. <laughs> yeah. When you're a parent, you want to grow up around a little bit- people who are just have a little bit of racism in them, a little bit of tribalism in them, whatever race they are, you just want them a little bit to be like, I'm protecting you from people that don't want it, that aren't okay. into our values. No, I, I'm telling I you, that's what you that. want. Because okay. not that's only what you will want. they protect you, but they'll also make you appear more <laughs> righteous. So if you are like, well, I'm not that, but thanks for the protection, then you get to who walk Who are they through. making me appear more righteous to, though? Like, 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 like a woke, just like myself. a young woke <laughs> building, you'll be out there with like your stroller and like, some like, you know, like mentally deranged lunatic will be walking around. You'd be like, you know, you have to like, he has mental health struggles. And like, I'm just not sure. Like maybe he can come like close to us where like the old guy will just take out a gun and shoot him, you know, like, and then your kid is safe. No, you don't understand the level of old I'm talking about. Though. Okay. This is like not, they're not conscious. Do you know what I mean? Got like, it. There's, yeah. there's neighbors that I have to reintroduce myself to every time I see them for the last three years. Oh, yeah. Got like it. it's that. It, we're, they're like, Biden talking. old. Like they just and saw the ring. It's not like you have old, strong people in New York. Like they're no. they're really, if they've lived in New York their whole lives, they they are basically the bottom of Ursula's cave. Look, yes. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> It's a good that, way to describe that, that it. That is yeah. exactly those little just figures yeah, that are just like, <laughs> completely it's... rigid. They look like their arm will break off yes. if you touch it. Yes. Yeah, they're like old clay. Yes. yes. Yeah. So I'm that's who I'm dealing with. They're not gonna protect me. They don't they don't even have any opinions anymore. Right. You know? They're but, just uh, sort of I just go, hi, Alex. And he goes, who are you? And then I go, it's me. And then it's it, kind of like you're living with a bunch of babies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, exactly. Yeah. That's, um, yeah, but I still, I, I still love this idea of like living in the city and like just walking. It's great. Yeah, but I, I, my family doesn't want to do it. But yeah. I also have too many kids. Like, what if you had three kids? Could you live in the city with three kids? I can't fucking imagine. I can't imagine. People ask me already. They're like, do you want another? I'm like, I just got out of a car wreck. And you're like, when yeah. are you going to get behind the wheel? Yeah, you're like, my <laughs> vagina is still bleeding. Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> healing. I'm dying. Yes. You know? I'm just Yeah, pudding. Nicole was split open like a demogorgon. And people were like, so when's the next one yeah, coming? And I'm like, I don't know, man. Let, like you let should the be putting a straight dissolve. jacket for asking <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. We're still in a, for the first six to eight months after Jasmine gave birth to our little one, she was using the strap on. So it could, because she's like, we're not even, we're not even coming close. And I was just getting railed. Um, did Jasmine do a C-section? Did she do? No, she just did, vag. Just vag. Through the vag, three vagus. Oh, wow. Yeah. Three vaggy what vaggies. You? Uh, she seed, but she's looking to hopefully V on this one, but yeah. we'll see. Yeah. But I thought once you see, you can't ever V again. There's a, there's no, a V back. There's a, there's a whole new thing. Interesting. Yeah, did but you it v? depends on the size. No, I did a C-section. You seed. Yeah. So the next time you go, you'll have to V. 
No, I said, please, can I get a C-section? I didn't even need one. They were like, you can do vaginal. I was like, I don't want no. to. No, thanks. I was like, I don't want to push for one fucking second. I'm yeah. tired. Yeah, Nicole, uh, she labored <laughs> for like 25 hours. And no, then thanks. they're like, your child is giant and facing the other way. Yeah. So let's try to get yeah. this thing out. And then apparently the doctor <laughs> made the incision. She said this was the first time in her 25 years of practicing medicine. <laughs> she opened my wife and my son's lips were right there. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> <God>. <laughs> Just ready to <laughs> shock. Literally goes, oh, no. <laughs> what a That's sick. That's terrifying. <laughs> that is terrifying. Just like a guppy fish. <laughs> Hello. He's just cleaning algae off the That's tank. That's wild. <laughs> oh That's hilarious. God. I heard her while she was like shaking me around. Like, cause you know, you can, you can't feel anything, but you can feel the table like oh, jostling. Sure and I remember being like, is this normal? The amount of like this, yeah. the table's shaking a lot. And then I hear my, Obi, who's like this very, very Italian woman, she just goes, that's a big baby. Yeah, you know. <laughs> like, she, it was like, we're going to need a bigger boat kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. You know? No, it's it's like, it feels like there's an actual construction site on the other side of the yeah. curtain yeah. because there's so much yanking. My wife had an adverse reaction to to the <laughs> medicine or whatever the epidural? numbing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the epidural was its own thing, but then the medicine for the C-section, she they're like, there might be some shaking and she may lose some color, but you know, everything's okay. She turned full turquoise blue and like was shaking oh like this my God. in full Jesus position. And I'm just like, <laughs> everything's great, honey. Don't worry. She like threw up. The nurse is like, she shouldn't do that. And I'm like, shut your fucking face. <laughs> oh the, my yeah, God. The, it was Jesus. like a whole, whole thing. Well, so fun. I know ja Jazz, I think, uh, well, not I think I was there on Violet was her third baby. So she felt as she was pushing that Violet wasn't turned right. And she was pushing Violet Whoa. out of her vagina and going like that and just fucking looking at me. Oh my without God. blinking <laughs> once. She was like, <laughs> she was like that, that's like a civil yeah. war vet. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's awesome. pushing up. But then, you know, there was like this whole big thing where they were like, okay, you know, dad, you know, when when you know your daughter comes out, we're gonna cut the cord and all thing, because it was like whatever. And then as soon as they came out. The, the, she, the umbilical, umbilical cord was wrapped around her neck yeah. Yeah. because Jasmine, I guess, was pushing her too much. I was like, <laughs> "Let the doctors do this." And then, and then, the, right away, dude, they, the one of the OB, the nurse practitioner, I think, took Violet by her foot like this and just had her upside down and was smacking her in the ass, like genuinely, really hard, like trying to wake her up, but like, like this, like my yeah. fucking. Jesus seconds old Christ. baby is just upside down yeah. right now and they didn't hear like a scream and then she gave her one whack like wound it up wow. <laughs> and then, and then she's my, a puerto rican woman it <laughs> yeah spunk. and then my daughter went my daughter went <laughs> 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 she goes, my daddy is white <laughs> so so but it was terrifying that it's whole awesome, part though. that whole like part of like early like the first six months of a baby's life is like every moment you're like, this is it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. It's also like seeing it done in a hospital. It's like, how did this happen in the woods? Yes. Yeah. How did anybody fucking do this it's in crazy. the woods? It makes zero, zero sense. sense. Which I'm listening, uh, I'm reading slash listening the book Sapiens. I know, right you, now. Told me, you told me yesterday Ve as well. Very excited to uh, <laughs> to half read a book and just really unload facts and theories based Dude, on Dude, wait that. until you get, you're going to get into one part where they talk about culture, yeah. which is wild because it kind of makes it feel this guy, I think he's, I think he's Jewish. The author, right? Is uh, he the, Jewish? The reader is British. The re oh, you're listening. Okay, but yeah. I think the author, his name is like Yo Yokev something. But he's he's he's. I think he's uh, uh, Jewish. But he says about culture. This edible's hitting me. He yeah, said, you "I took, whispered dude, Jewish. I, 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 I Jewish. took another edible, guys. So it's slowly starting to hit me. But let me get this point out before <laughs> I'm done. Um, he t said about culture where he was like, and I'm paraphrasing. He said that <laughs> that." Culture is all, there's only one culture. It's just a human culture because he said, whoever you, whatever your culture is, Irish culture, Celtic culture, whatever, that was raped and pillaged into your great, 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 great grandmothers by whoever the earlier conqueror was. And then so much time goes by that you forget you don't even know what your original culture was because it's all just been blended together right. by whoever the previous conqueror was. So he said, so some people who really stick to culture, the thing is with them, they've just had conquerors earlier closer to our time than someone who's lost their culture like a thousand years ago. 
Interesting. So it's interesting. <laughs> the thing that I really am sticking to is the fact that just everything is a myth. Like they're mm. talking about everything societally, how we keep order and everything is a yeah. myth, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Right. Like we require myths to kind of act in line and not be just like complete. religion. Did you get to the part yeah, about it's, religion? It's in, it's in religion. We're, it's in yeah. all of that stuff. But what I love and what I was talking to you about uh, is the fact that like, you know, it got to the point early point where there are so many different species of human beings yes. where there's like sapiens, Neanderthal, all that stuff. And then we either, there's so much evidence to say that sapiens. Why did you just, stop the? Why did you lose the H in Neanderthal? Yeah, I did. Was that a thing? I like it was one of those things. Well. Like was it? Was that like the French saying, or is it? Is it? Or is, is the proper word to say Neanderthal? Or are you speaking like a real Neanderthal <laughs> saying Neanderthal? Uh, that's how the British guy said yeah. it. And I think I've also heard Joe Rogan correct himself enough times on that, where that may be the correct saying. Neanderthal. The Neanderthal. H is silent. I believe yeah, okay, the, okay. The, the, the H is silent. Yeah. If it's not. That's, I'm a, I'm yeah. a horse's ass. Because that sounds like how my two-year-old say Neanderthal. If you, if you and Joe Rogan are the only two people that I've heard pronounce it that yeah. way, I'm going to go with Thal. Thal. Think so? with, yeah. Well, this is. is my bid to get on the program. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's my bid. But dude, is, pull out your liver and eat it. You'll get right on. <laughs> <laughs> and just cook it up with some jalapenos. <laughs> yummy, <my>. yummy. <laughs> All right. So, Sorry. That, and how Sorry. there's so much evidence for like their the potential gene merging or whatever, but more evidence that we just went on mass gen genocide as sapiens just sure. killing out all these things because we had advanced brains and sure. now we are just one homogenous uh, species of human being there's no other kinds which now what i think is that we are leading towards our merger with machines and the actual next iteration of human beings is going to be half robot half man and sapiens are going to be no longer right because it's just just the same way yeah, like it's you, just it, it, it all thing all things seem to progress and in the same way that we are becoming more and more reliant on technology, we have our phones on us at all times. It's only a matter of time. I mean, people are injecting nanotechnology to try to get remove some cancers. It's right. only a matter of time before I have a go go gadget cock and I'm half robot, half man, and I can finally please a woman. Rosebud, <laughs> your rebuttal. I just am, I, here's my question about this book is like, what's the take on any of this? Is it just, is he just presenting information yes. or is he just like there is no take? So there's no there's no take. There's no opinion. It's all based on just evolutionary fact and presenting it as kind of like, hey, come to your own come to your own conclusions. I, yeah. But also, culture is it's all made up. It doesn't ma mean that it's not important. Just everything yeah. is made up as a construct for our own survival. I mean, this is. This is kind of my take on most things at this point in my life, but I'm, I guess I'm just like, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, know, you're right. I respect that. I'm kind of like, if that's going to happen, that'll happen. And I'm just like, well, it's fine. I, I will, my, my actual goal in life is to not be the old man that's standing in front of the boulder of society right. and telling it to stop. Yeah. Right. Run me the fuck over. Yeah. I am but a blip. That is it. I have no opinion one way or another how this goes. I, get I had my child. They'll figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. What I'm the like, fuck do you want? Hope she can swim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, buy a gun. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll get you one for your eighth birthday. Oh, I forgot. I know we go jumping back quick, but then we'll move on from the Ghostbusters premiere. But in the Ghostbusters, <laughs> in Ghostbusters, yes. No, but in the movie, and I don't, and I Which, don't. Which, by the way, I had no idea Ghostbusters was coming out. I yeah. had no idea. Comes out March 22nd. Is it, is it a new one? Is yeah. it a reboot? What's it's called, the um, it's called Frozen Empire. So it's oh. like the old Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd are in it. Oh, Ernie wait, Hudson. I did know about this. Yeah. I heard about Paul this, Rudd, yeah. right? Paul and the Rudd. Keenan Thompson Stranger was Things. there. Yeah. Paul Rudd is in there, the kid yeah. from Stranger Things. Keenan Thompson was in the theater. Um I love so him. so he uh so anyway, there's this one, there's a part of the movie, and I'm not giving anything away. There's a part of the movie where it's like clear as day, one of the there's a 15 year old girl in the movie, um, uh, Egon's daughter, who's a ghostbuster, and this other like 17 or 16 year old ghost, female ghost from like the 1930s. And like, they're clearly lesbians. Like there's like, they're kind of like, it's like lesbian scenes. And like the first time, like, like it, it happened, like the lesbian ghost came and then like her and you were like, oh shit, this is like absolutely building up to like, what's going to be a lesbian kiss. Somebody, I don't know who the hell it was. Somebody was like, I can't deal with a gay ghost. <laughs> <laughs> like loud and clear. I was sitting right next to Murray, Murray yeah. from the Practical Jokers. Yeah. He was like, did you hear that? And I was like, holy smokes. 
here, here, I, this I don't is know. why they put the fans in their own theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, does, it doesn't even feel weird that it's a gay ghost. It feels more weird that it's a 15-year-old girl and they're kind of like teasing underage, you know, scissoring. Yeah. It, That's it was, weird. There was the no inter, inter ghost <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was no kissing or and nothing happened, but it was just like you're like these kids are like they're in love. But we like, all yeah. remember yeah. the hottest scene from Ghostbusters one is when Sigourney Weaver gets raised up in the thing and like yeah. you know stripped of clothes, and I think she gets fingered by a ghost or something like that. Mm-hmm. So There's that is kind of-, of a subtle callback. But you're like, that's a fucking kid. Don't right. bring me to that place with a child. Right. 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 <laughs> you know. <laughs> he throw the mic, walk yeah. out of the studio. Get, get me out of here, <laughs> dude. How about this? How about this? Okay, here's other news, and a lot of people think Andrew Tate was arrested again in Romania. Okay, oh. but here's the conspiracy. Ready for this? When um, at the Oscars. John Cena came out naked, right? right. A, a good bit that I haven't watched over a hundred times and pleasure myself to. <laughs> but John Cena came out and and John Cena came out and and did this bit where he was naked. It was a good bit about like costumes or whatever. And a lot and Andrew Tate went on the podcast because a lot of big thing on the internet was this was some type of like shaming ritual. Humiliation ritual. Humiliation ritual. Well, they for- said that about me and dressing up as uh, Mrs. Claus for this podcast. Yes, They're like, sh- welcome to real Hollywood canon already humiliation yep. ritual. Shame. And you know what? <laughs> they are right. Yeah. So, so, uh, so the shaming ritual. So they said, and he talked about this on his podcast, mm-hmm. right? He has, he's had Ryan Garcia on who's talking a lot about this. And they talked about this on his podcast and they said within five hours of this episode going up about the shaming ritual, he was arrested. So the, the conspiracy is is like they're now the powers that be because he's shedding light on something, arrested him. Yeah. Arrested. <laughs> What's that from Ace Ventura, right? Yeah. Yeah. Arrest him. Arrested. <laughs> yeah. So I Nothing don't know if that's further, tr- your honor. Yes. <laughs> I think so. I don't know if what that's What did he get true. arrested for? Yeah, what for, do we know? It, what, it was a female For shedding thing. light. Oh, yes. that's true. For, yeah, for, for Alpha Rule 805. So what happened was he, I think he was kind of like pseudo house arrest in Romania. Like he wasn't supposed to leave the country. And oh, so he was already For trafficking and, shit, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you guys know Aiden Ross's? Like, yes. Streamer? Which one? Aiden Ross. No. She's the streamer, he has rappers Twitch. on all the time. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a uh, little white Jewish guy. Yeah. Um, he, he read his text with Andrew Tate aloud on stream. And Andrew was like, hey, I'm thinking about leaving Romania soon. It's now or never if you want to come do like content for a few days. And that was like a private text. Aiden read it aloud on stream. And then they raided his house and arrested him and his brother. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. So it was mo- probably more about that, like yeah. breaking parole than yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. I think it was the Illuminati. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) He's pretty jacked, Andrew Tate. You think he he does creatine? I mean, he's an actual... You think he's on creatine? He's taking those creatine gummies up up, up on my TikTok. Really? I swear to Christ. Do they work? So here's the thing with me. It's right now, right... I think that they are working because... Because I've only been on them eight days, but I don't look like this. But... He's on test. Though. I mean, he's, he's fucking more, shredded, yeah. dude. I kind of like him That's on the right better, right. Is though. Is that he's the looking- same guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What body do you like better? Do you like him more on the right or the left? It just as as a woman, you know, like. I would say the right. Right, he's like beefier but I there. Really, he he really grosses me out in a way that I can't. I like it. <laughs> right. You're making me choose something that I hate, but I. I would you don't say like the that? right. You don't like a guy that walks around? That's the right. Topless with yeah, a... Yeah, yeah, That's why yeah. he's in prison. Yeah. yeah. God, please let there be a headline. SNL writer says she wants, like, Andrew <laughs> Tate's body or I something. I hate you. I hate you so much. I need health insurance, buddy. His hairline is tough, huh? It is just dead dandelion up there. You could blow it. Yep. Blow it he's right a big off boy. the scalp. Um, he's... I, I would definitely... The right is better because the left is just, like... It doesn't even... Those muscles don't even look useful. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's like summer versus winter. Yeah. You know, I like the winter bod. I do head. too. So I've been taking them for seven days, creatine, creatine gummies, creatine monohydrate, and um, which they say is the safest supplement ever. It's well, the most studied. That's what they is, say. That's it, what they say. It just fills your muscles with water right. to re, re uh Heal, right? Re, well, yeah, and like it keeps the yeah, it, it keeps the the water in your you muscle. Both sound like you don't know what you're talking about. I don't. <laughs> yeah. well, I for said, sure don't. Well, the yeah. way you said is he on creatine sounded like you were t- like it sounded like you were describing somebody on steroids, but creatine is just like an over the counter. Yeah, supplement. creatine yeah, yeah. is like <laughs> yeah. that's no, just but like, creatine. I've, I've dated guys with like big things of creatine yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah. Creatine was huge in like the late '90s, early yes. 2000s yes. when bulking was was very. But big. then it got yeah. bad press because people said it makes you bloated. It's yeah. fat. It but did. I, 
But all those studies, you've taken it before. No, that. I've just seen the kids in my high school that like were, were creatine was the precursor to full blown steroids. And they looked obviously better on steroids, but creatine, all it did was give them like uber Irish face, like yeah. where they just had full thumb. They all it just looked just like they were about to, to get their period. Yeah, it right. just looked, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if the chocolate. gummies, <laughs> yeah. are the gummies then, do they not bloat you? I, I have no idea. What I've do you feel though? How long have you been I've been taking, taking it for seven days. And I will, because what it does is it releases ATP in your muscle, like muscle energy. I will say I've been a little bit stronger in the gym. And for the first time in like maybe ever, Jazz, I was like, I was like doing the dishes and I just didn't have a shirt and I had my shorts on. And she like hit me in the back and she was like, you're so beefy. And like she showed like some type of like sexual interest in me. I was like, what is that? What? <laughs> I was like, this is nuts. <laughs> and, and I was like, cool. And then, and then, but then she, you know, she walked away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, and I have been there too, where it's just like some out of nowhere. And you're like, what the fuck? I'm a sexual yeah. being. Yeah. I was like, huh? <laughs> Me? We have kids. <laughs> and, and so, and so, and so I think it's working. My trainer today, who, who, who is a hater, but in a good way, mm -hmm. where he's like, you look like shit. He, he was like, oh, you're, you're, you're starting to fill in now, which is, I guess a good thing. I don't know. I, I don't know. I like it. What? Maybe you can fuck your trainer. Maybe I could fuck my trainer. <laughs> He's, you know what? He's an Ecuadorian man. I would like that. Nice. Yes. Like uh, Cheeto Rivera. Or no, Vera, the fighter that uh, just fought Sean O'Malley. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. Me the weed, the edibles. <laughs> I mean, that's how you fully know that I'm in the thick of it is yeah. if I'm just word associating with something that nobody gives a shit about. Dude, I'm these like, edibles. Oh, Ecuador, Cheeto. When Vera. these edibles kick in, they kick in in such a fun way. <laughs> And <laughs> dude, John's got a Seattle <laughs> Supersonics hat on. Yeah, I got to tell you, man, I got a straight pipe to John's cock, and it is a fucking, I mean, right down the main street to dude, the inside of this? his thigh. Everybody's Rose like, why is Cannon looking slightly left of the lens? Rosebud, ready for this? John, yeah. he, and he just, he revealed on the pod that he broke up with her, but John had a girlfriend who did not speak English, and she almost got pregnant, but she did not speak one word of English. She only spoke Spanish. They would only speak through Google Translate. Well, you, yes. She yeah. almost got pregnant, even though you guys only spoke through Google Translate. She, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She well, was, that's okay, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. kind yeah. of ideal. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, she was a few weeks late, but we're good. We're good. Ben, we broke up. So. But, but they, and, she and was yes, a few weeks late. If you, if you had the baby with her, would you have then hired her as a nanny? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think, I don't know, probably co-parenting. <laughs> have you spoken to her since? Have, I know last show we didn't speak to her at all. Have you spoken to her since nothing, the last episode? Nothing. So that's it. It's over. Probably, Finito. but she's been like posting like relationship stuff on her story. Oh, like, like the constantly, like Ugh. if it's real, we'll see each other again. Oh. Right, like that, but yeah. that's but that's got to be annoying for you because everything she posts is in Spanish. So then you got to screenshot a Google Translate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's> so <laughs> many steps. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she's sharing memes just in Spanish. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you have looked up the meaning of these things. Uh, yeah, I mean, I speak a little bit of Spanish, so that's kind of how we, okay. we corresponded. Yeah. But yeah. Did why did you guys you break up? Was it the Google Translate? Sorry. Uh, no, no, go ahead. That's a better question. No, I mean, she she was just. Uh, kind of like crazy Latina. I don't want to stereotype, but uh, yeah. But like, you just did. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, what she do you mean, woman John? brain? <laughs> and even worse, Spanish. She yeah. was fucking crazy. <laughs> crazy. Yeah, she, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> That's such a crazy reason. You mm -hmm. know what I realized is that women have their own version of that where when they break up with a guy, they'll be like, he was a narcissist. And I'm yes. like, oh, that's our way of calling the man crazy. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. right. We just go, he was a narcissist. And both of us are right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And it's also like your, your girl's probably a narcissist too. Yeah. We're all narcissists Crazy in some is way. subjective also. It's like yeah. what is normal to somebody else might be batshit to me. So whatever well, I, I think is crazy. I know for a fact is... that what's normal to somebody else is just like fun to me. Yeah. yeah. Like interesting. You know, like yeah. sometimes people are like, that's crazy. I'm like, mm, it just seems like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> just keep yeah. things That's right. Keep that sounds like somebody who's redlining it. Yeah. I'm in. <laughs> Having fun. Um, all right. They, People are saying Conor McGregor is a cokehead. Did True you say this, dude? No, what happened? Let me see. I, what happened? Speaking about, speaking about a body, Conor McGregor, oh my God. So he's, uh, it's so crazy because I love Conor McGregor. I'm an, I'm an apologist Prove for, it. for a couple of people, right? It's, it's Eminem, Eli Manning, Conor McGregor, and like that's basically it. Yeah. But Conor McGregor, I, I used to love him, but he's so all over the place where one, one video he'll be completely lucid and then the next he'll be like... <laughs> So like, what was he and he's like, just like a fucking Irish maniac. And you're like, dude, fucking take a Xanax. The last thing I saw of 
him was the documentary, but I gotta say, I having not seen a single clip of him since then, I'm insanely attracted to him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's right up your alley. Yeah, it's fucked he is. up. Yeah, I'm totally. like, I can't even watch Blue's him. Blue's problem, potential to strike you at any moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's so guy. funny too, because he doesn't look anything like her husband. <laughs> so I like her husband being like, how do I look like Dude, Conor McGregor? Well Run it back the beginning of this video, because the beginning is the most telling part. Rosebud, when you were uh, drinking, were you Coke That's as him well? Now? Can we get some volume? Were you Coke Thank as well? You. No. Okay, no. so this is like classic cocaine puddle face. Okay. He's literally pulling at his jaw and trying to straighten his face out in oh, a no. physical way oh, before no. he starts That's talking. So CPF. Hi, Connor. I'm Claire Gallagher with the Daily Texas. <laughs> oh, my God. Your acting debut. Obviously, it's your first experience. Hard work, hard work. But, you know, we got it on. It's in the bank for life. Yeah. You know, you put something in the bank, some, maybe it's not going to be there for life. You might spend it. This baby is in there for life, and I'm ecstatic about that. You know, I got it in good, strong shape. I gave it my all. You know, I, I was a little probably green at times, a bit rough, rough around the edges, but for the character it worked. Yeah. And, you know, onwards to the next one if, 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 I, if there is a next one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's just <laughs> looking just, everywhere. Yeah. Dude, the way he looked clue. away was like a Doberman pinching. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. He just, he's like, he's, he caught a scent. That, Dude, yeah. yes. Dude, there's times where I've been just gacked to the gills and truly in the middle of a conversation and in the middle of a sentence, I'm already moved on to another okay, thing. I, yeah. I've never done cocaine. So like when you do it, like yeah. take me through, like what is the addictive part of it? Is it just, and Vito, you can get involved because um, we know you've done it. And uh, and what is, like, what is it? Does it just take you from, like, feeling depressed to feeling happy? Just gives you energy, makes you feel like you can do anything? What all is of, it? All of that. So one, the most exciting part of, of cocaine is on the way to get it. I think that's been said ad nauseum. It mm -hmm. is, like, there's no better feeling. Everything is possible in that moment. You get cocaine and you're like, I mean, I could probably run for president in, like, three hours if this all goes well. But then you get it. <laughs> You chop it out. It's a communal thing with your friends. So again, it's like gathering around the watering hole. Me and my buddies used to just do lines off of one signed picture of Tiger Woods because we wanted to do coke off of greatness. And we'd just huddle around that, blow lines, and it's super fun because it's euphoric as fuck. You could go from having 30 beers to being an absolute burden of everyone around you right. to being able to sell a lot full of Ford Mustangs. <laughs> so like, let me ask you this. Do you, think, do you think if you're like actively drunk and you did a couple of lines of yeah. Coke and it hit you, you could drive home? I, and, and not only could I, I have. But you would still <laughs> fail the DUI. <laughs> uh, a billion percent. Dude, so me and my friends used to truly, I mean, that's why a lot of us died, but we had like the, you know, <laughs> hey, sober up before you do it. Symmetry. Each nostril, don't blink for 10 minutes until you get home. Yeah. I did that. I drove a five-speed Ford Ranger, which was a long throw shifter. So I'm basically driving like farm equipment down the street <laughs> just with a bloody nose. Dude, I was with my friend Tim in the car, and we saw what was a milk crate, like a recyclable bin in the in the middle of the road. It was a baby. It was, it was just, <laughs> just a baby in a basket. <laughs> so my friend Tim goes, oh, there's a bin. And I'm going like 20, and I don't know why I just hit the gas instead of steering out of the way and I ran it over and then dragged it for two miles. <laughs> it was 4 a.m. and it's just <laughs> down residential streets yeah. until I pulled over. I'm coked up. I get out under my car and I'm just kicking this thing <laughs> that is just completely shredded into the chassis of my truck and I just eventually splinter it, look around. There's no cops. Get back in the car, drive safely home. I do not recommend this to any child Don't out do there. It. <laughs> Vito, I'm lucky what to you, be here. A lot now, of my Vito, friends aren't. Now, Vito doesn't drive. He grew up in the city. So, what was your cocaine experience? Would it be wild? I feel like in the city it's so different because, like Mike was saying, it was a communal thing. But in the city, you have to like be very like you're, you're all doing it, but you don't really do it together. Like mm. you're all doing key bumps separately. Right. So like you're sneaking off to bathrooms. Like you would you would like you would kind of judge bars based on which bar had a good bathroom. So you could invoke. That's bathrooms. a big difference too because he grew up in the suburbs, so you would be doing it at houses more open. But you. There's no house parties in the city. No, there's you no know. house parties. There's apartment parties, but by the time you're in college and you're, like, really getting into it, you're just going to, like, bars and shit. Yeah. Right. So then I realized very quickly that it, you have a less risk of getting caught if you do it in the open than if you go to the bathroom. Because mm -hmm. if you keep going to the bathroom, as a bouncer start realizing, like, you've been going to the bathroom a lot. So you just start kind of, like, going up behind people's backs and just, like, doing a key bump, like, under them, like, looking around John, the security. why don't you show everyone your legs for the camera? Yeah. Get yeah, right in here. See I want to look at look at this. I mean, those are see. This some is what if you don't thick morsels. Guys, look at those. Ooh, those guys calf. and girls, 
Let me tell you something. If you don't speak English, you can have those legs wrapped around you. <laughs> <laughs> Rose, wrapped look, around look, at, you. look at these big ones and then give Rosebud the girl one. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Vito, Rose. can I tell you a social method that we developed? Yeah. So, so we called no, it Coke Straw. What? We cut a straw two Did inches we long. Straw for her? We held the bag in our hand loosely, walked around the bar, and then would Drink just it like raise it to our nose <laughs> and do wild. little bumps to the point where this one girl took accidentally, like took most of the bag because you couldn't really control the amount and then almost overdosed in the bar had to be put up on the bar whatever all this stuff she finally fired up and then puked into a shot glass <laughs> she's still, still, wait she's oh still God. alive Is she, she's still alive she's still alive okay yeah. i was like if she's dead and you're telling us this story while no no we're like so, digging dude i just poked it through the plastic shakes? was that stupid no is that no good it's like boba. oh you are supposed to do that yeah right because then it's no spills Oh wow! Oh. I've never considered that once. So your question of like what, like why do you do coke? I think the best way to describe it is like you know when like you go out, and you drink, and like an hour or two into the night, you might be like, I'm getting tired, I want to go home. Coke is like you never have that feeling ever, and you just want to stay out as late as you possibly can. I there's like how no you like gritted your teeth while you said that. Honestly, there's like yeah, like, he gritted yeah, those baby yeah. teeth. <laughs> I like don't even drink that much anymore. I like I don't do any of that now. I mean, I drink every, every like when I drink now, I drink, but I don't touch coke. But like, yeah, it's just, it's uh, it like, there's also, you have your different dealers. Like I would have my dealer that I went to for the start of the night of like my expensive shit that like was good quality. And then at 3 a.m. if I still wanted to keep going, then I had my like $40 bag guy. And that was like, this was fucking Damn. And that, 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 that's where, so that $40 bag guy, that's the fentanyl guy. Yeah. Yeah. That's 100%. where if it's going to get you, it's going to get you. Well, I now. stopped before all of the, like, yeah, same. I stopped and then like six months later, all the fentanyl shit came up and I was like, wow, I definitely would have died if totally. I was still Totally. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. cannot, like doing cocaine right now is, is an insane it's risk. Insane. It feels yeah. like a suicide pact. I like... I can still if That's I bring myself. I feel my about si having sex now, but go ahead. Really? <laughs> yes. Just because you don't want to get pregnant again. Yes. Yeah. I get it. It's a fear of it. Jasmine right. would talk to me about this. She was like, "It's a genuine fear. Like I can't go through this again." Do you guys yeah. glove up? It's terrifying. Um, no. Yeah, no. How could you? No, I'm an adult. Right. Yeah, you Same can't. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't. After you have a kid, that's just yeah, ridiculous. Yeah, like, I, I, I can't do it. <laughs> I think we should. I hope uh, she does with other guys. I mean, we talked about doing. <laughs> we talked about doing steroids together on the show, and that seemingly got a pretty big response. I'm doing People creatine. have been messaging me. We should. We should do find some sort of steroidal doctor out there that wants to put us through a treatment. But we also should do maybe like sure, a, sure, sure. Is also a, sure, sure. Is a, uh, uh, sure, sure. a I'm a Neanderthal. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a uh, a couple's um what is that called when you tie off your dick? Vasectomy. Vasectomy. Yeah. Couples vasectomy. Yeah. The two this of us. This is disgusting. <laughs> Real. Throw yeah. some coffee in it. Yeah, that's that's gross. Yeah. Mine is I'm like sorry. fully no, it's just okay. cold Throw peanut it off butter. The it tastes wall. like it tastes like I'm drinking whipped cream through a straw. Oh, but that's good whipped cream. No, it's but it's it's whipped cream that has vegetables in it or something. Oh, veggie whipped cream. Yeah, yeah. So tattoo it off one of these sneakers. You know what? This I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm acting ungrateful. Thank you for the protein shake. I'll I'll drink it. Coming to you live from Slam Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we should do? You know, here's a bit. Wow, here's a bit. We should do a thing, and we'll have this ready for next week. We should do a thing where Mike and I, or whomever the guests may be. We do like a roast, like a roast of like you pull up something like a picture or thing and we roast it and then we go slammed magazine. There you go. You know, you got slammed magazine. That stinks. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't great. <laughs> what was that? That I'll tell you what. <laughs> That doesn't sound like a season 50 SNL host. <laughs> I would love to see you walk into that office and pitch something like that and with just, full confidence. Hey, Bob's, I'm just looking at Rose, but she's my only friend. I'm like, can you? Honest, you I've about? never seen that guy in my life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> never seen him before. Matt. You know, before I got hired, I, I went up to Che. I was like, hey, man, thanks for, you know, if they if if they came to you and they asked or anything, thanks for the... Uh, for the vote of confidence, and he goes, the second you're in that building, I don't know you. <laughs> <laughs> I respect that. Good. He was right, though, because it's like, he, first of all, he doesn't come to work. But second, I'm like, <laughs> but second, it's like, you don't know how people are going to do. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Right, yeah, You gotta yeah. say, like, fuck you. Like, yeah. survive first. People, like, you never know, like, what your future is. Like, I, 
when I was in eighth grade, right, I went to high school and three kids from my eighth grade that I went to school since kindergarten went to my high school. And yeah. my mom was like, I'm so happy, you know, you're going to go to high school with people you know. Oh, my God, it's good. And then I swear to Christ, the first and last time I ever saw them again in that high school was the first day we all took the bus together. And then I never saw them again for four years. No right. shit. I did not Wait, see only them. Only three kids, though? Three kids, yeah. Only three? Because it was just private and far away or why? Well, no, I mean, with the, we were the only three... Well, no, three kids that got accepted from my grammar school. Oh, okay. So, because I don't know how city schools work, because everybody that I went to eighth grade with just kind of naturally transitioned yeah. into the high school. No, together. you have to get into this high school. Would you say they got slammed into the high school? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I was. <laughs> See, Chris is, yes, yes, yeah, slam, yeah, magazine. <laughs> It just becomes an old radio show. <laughs> yeah. We should have. Bring back sound effects, Vito. I know. What are you should... doing over there? <laughs> I never know what he's doing. Uh, back there. Just back here with his computers. Dude, I fucking, these kids come to work with shorts on. Those fucking boards aren't connected to anything. <laughs> I know, dude. They're not They're not plugged into anything. Dude, they're, they're, this is like the youth. He's like, John's like 25, Vito's 30. That's they're disgusting. kids, they're babies. Wow. But they're doing. I think they're doing good. That upsets Thank you. me. Yeah. I think they're doing you good. Just set off comments of people who are going to be saying we suck and we don't do anything. <laughs> what, did I say? <laughs> what are you even doing? What are you even doing, doing back, back there? there? So a funny thing. So Chris just brought up that we, when we're like city kids, when we go to high school, we have to like apply for different schools and right. shit. Yeah. So a big New York City thing is when you meet people, you usually say to them like, "Hey, what high school did you go to?" Mm -hmm. And whenever people from the suburbs hear that fucking question, their mind is blown because they all just go to the local yeah. high school. Like, right. Yeah. Like, me and Chris, we both went to like Catholic schools in New York. Yeah, yeah. So like when you're in grammar school, you literally, you will never see a lot of those kids for the rest of your life. Yeah. Right. That's wild. Oh, did yeah. your high school cost a, spe like, did you have to s spend extra money or was oh, that? Oh yeah, it was oh, a okay. private Catholic private, high school, bro. Yeah. Bro, I'm asking, qu this you is think, exactly think why I'm a traumatized adult dollars? is because when I was a child and I asked either of my parents any question, they responded like both of you, <laughs> unsupportive and acted like I was a fucking maniac for not having all the information already. <laughs> Yeah, like, here's like, if, 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 if it was a Queens high, Mike, what high school, like, imagine, <laughs> Queens, what high school did you go to? Uh, uh, what high Sinatra. school did you go What high school? Oh, Tappan Zee High School. Pff, sounds like a lot of Jews. <laughs> that's what, that's what they say? Queens, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. No, crazy. that would be suffering. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love Jewish people. Yeah. I just want to say that. I think well documented. My neighbors are Jewish, very good people. I'm always bringing them latka and they don't know why. Slammed. Slammed. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Gaza Strip, slammed. God damn it, Chris. Slammed magazine, season 50 oh, SNL yeah. host. <laughs> Can we name the episode season 50 SNL host? 100%. We're writing the bits now. <laughs> <laughs> I texted my texted Canon yesterday. Please don't get me fired. <laughs> now we'll edit please. this shit out. This isn't live. Yeah, we'll put this shit on anything that's crazy. We'll just throw it on the Patreon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, why not? You why know, not? What are we testing right now? Live streams. <laughs> but that, but, yeah, dude. This are was we Vito's, testing that right so, now? Yeah. So we're oh, not. No, but live. this isn't live when anywhere. Not, when not. he said we're not live, I was like, that we're absolutely live. We no, are. No, 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 no. Okay. We're not live. No, this no, is not live. No. Just, just to peel back the curtain a little bit of the show because this is very funny. We are going to become a live show, or that's the idea. And that's Chris awesome. is like, let's do it. Slot out a time. Vito, you know, rightfully so, is like, hey, just want to make sure you're aware of all the implications that live, which means I can't edit things out in the moment. That's like, such a whenever you good say idea, it, though. Thank it you. is a good idea. And then, Season and 50 <laughs> SNL host idea. <laughs> <laughs> but so it's just. That's a good idea, right? To do it to live. To do live, right? Yeah. But what just happened? <laughs> Well, yeah, but the, but if you got. <laughs> but she didn't thing. say it. But if you got, are you talking having a live audience in front of you, or no. are you talking live on YouTube? Live on, live YouTube. on YouTube. Oh, that's a little different. Yeah. Listen, Rosebud knows what to do. She didn't say it. If that would come on, and then the head, oh, you know, Rosebud standing next to someone pro-Israel. What Rosebud would do is go in front of the SNL offices and light herself on fire and yell "Free Palestine," <laughs> <laughs> and then she'd get her job back. That's what it is. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I would just work as a half. <laughs> burn. She blew oh, perfect perfect timing of that face. Perfect. I would timing. just work as a half burned woman for yes. the rest of my life yeah and then i do i do an hour special with no laughs and i would cry at the end 
Did you see that guy lit himself on fire, the Free Palestine we're not guy? I didn't. Again. I didn't. Oh, we're not see doing that. that again. I can't watch that. I yeah, can't don't. watch that. I'm Chris like, made me and Mike watch it. It was the worst five minutes of our. It was lives. like a really hard moment. I, I can't watch it. I think I watched. A, did you guys put out a clip of you watching it? Yeah. Yes, I think I saw that. Yeah. Clip. Did, we, you, did you see it on we Pornhub? Did not, we did not put out a clip. Oh, of us watching it. Somebody Chris, put it out on Pornhub. Chris is somebody my put out a clip. Somebody put out a clip of them watching that. <laughs> Can I say why Chris is my favorite person, dude? <laughs> because he loved the idea of that clip existing so much, he answered yes in the yeah. moment. Like put it into existence. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. <laughs> it's like, did you put out a clip? You're goddamn yeah, right we did. Yeah, that was us. <laughs> no, I saw Patreon. That we did not put a clip out But it was that. on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, where all the action happens. Light yourself on fire. Slammed. Slammed. <laughs> Slam. Dun dun uh, dun dun uh. Let the boys, Let the boys be, be boys. boys. Slam. Well, slam it. This is slam's pretty progressive, right? So they'd be like, slammed. Dun dun uh, dun dun uh. Let the days be days. Yep. Yep. So back to the live streaming. Season thing. fifty. <laughs> every time, every time a joke of mine bombs, somebody else season fifty. And then at home, guys, if you if we're bombing in here, just comment season fifty, mm -hmm. yeah. and that's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> and it's inside baseball. That's what we got to get here. Buzz. Oh, baseball yeah. season starting. Dude, that just means you have to you have to come up with the photoshops of Chris in like a suit with the pink backdrop, like the stylized ones of him being the host of SNL. Yeah. One hundred percent. What were you gonna say, Vito? I was gonna say I'm not against live streaming, as Mike was saying. I just want everybody to be on the same page of what live streaming means. Yeah. Well, but babe, but here's the thing. Here's the thing, Bubba's. You, we have to do something different. So I think the live stream offers. So then we're you know standing out just a little bit. But after the third or fourth episode, we're getting like lawsuits. Then whatever, <laughs> we'll stop. <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. want to wait for the lawsuits? Before yeah, you... I agree. But here's We're the other all on thing, the same is page. That if both, you guys are both <coughs> comics, it's like you can read a room. If there's something that's not really working or there's something that you, if, if things are going in a direction where you know it shouldn't go, you'll stop, right? Or will you, or maybe I mean, Chris is. I've continued no, comedy. I would, I would stop. Yeah. If it was like really crazy, I would stop. <laughs> yeah. I would stop. But I would, here's but. the thing. Here's the thing. I would I would stop and then lo as we're live I'd be like edit that out put it on Patreon so <laughs> everyone heard it. Um, no, Chris is one of the most, and this is what makes him a great comedian mm -hmm. is that he's one of the most compul or I already, impulsive. I already am just off comedic board. people. You know what I mean? Like he just says it, yeah. and then he has no control over whether or not it comes out of his face. Yeah, no, so sure. it's almost. Yes, your I've honor. seen him literally reach for the words as they're coming out to try to put them back in his body. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, uh, You're like, and that's a big deal. No, <laughs> yeah. Shit. yeah, I know. I I do it with comedy, but then I also do it. The problem is, which is fun, but then I also do it with my life. Yeah. Which is, yeah, which yeah. Is, yeah. That's the problematic part yeah. where I'm like, let's just sell the house. <laughs> yeah. else, I'm reaching for the house. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not good. Hey, I won't pull out. I'm reaching for the baby. <laughs> you need your daily life to be on pre record and not on live stream. Yes. Not bad. There yeah. it is. I like that. I like yeah. that. You Make should start saying edit that out to Jasmine. Yes. <laughs> that should be our merch, edit that out. Yeah. <laughs> our, our merch should be put it, put that on Patreon. <laughs> All right, Trump versus Biden round two. We know who Rosebud got because she has to say. But who does who does everybody else in the room got? We got Trump versus Biden round two. Who is going to win? Like, who is our prediction? Oh, I thought it was like a, a, a boxing match. Yeah, is this, if this is a prediction, I, I'm going to predict Trump. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I well, mean, that, look at Joe Biden. It's, Unfortunately, it's he's literally not looks win. like me trying to read off the monitor. They don't. Both of them look <laughs> bad. The, both Joe of them Biden look looks like he lives in Rosebud's building. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> he does. <laughs> he really does. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it's. I think Trump's going to win. I mean, I think people, most people feel like whether you vote for him or not, I, I'm, not I'm not saying who we want to win, but I mean, factually, I mean, I think the country feels like Trump's most likely going to win I'll right now. This, I'll say the biggest problem that Trump could have right now is RFK and Aaron Rodgers on the ticket has way more chance to pull from Trump's side than Biden's I agree. Side. That would cause Biden might be might have hired the both of them to do this. Like that's true. Yeah. Right. Well, especially now that Aaron Rodgers is uh, a Sandy Hook truther, <laughs> he might have no, really pulled he from his side. He said that he yeah. was not he, right. No, but he, was he? he carefully worded and said that he thinks it happened and that there are real victims. He did not 
address the fact that he thinks it was a government psyop. Hold on I actually a don't care. He's Does a fucking Aaron quarterback. Is Aaron cares? Rogers actually a Sandy Hook? Like no. true? No. So this Supposedly thing, not. Uh, this weird thing happened. You where, can, what's happening right now, by the way, is uh, and, and then continue. What's happening by the way right now is I could see Rosebud her wheels turning because she <laughs> thinks Aaron Rodgers is hot. She's like, but fuck, maybe he's not. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> she's doing that thing yeah. about like she's like you know she's like is he Andrew Tate too? Because like that's I have so many images of me just wanting to suck his ass. Suck his ass. <laughs> That's suck. what I would want to do yeah. if I was gay to suck you know. a guy's ass. <laughs> just, just, full <laughs> mouth just around ass. Women asshole. looking at men going, God, I want to suck his I ass. Wanna, I want to suck his ass like cruise lips in a C-section. <laughs> <laughs> like a V-back. Like a V-back. Really. Like a V-back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just suck it out. All right, so go ahead. I'm sorry. ChrisDComedy.com for Tiki Wikis. Tiki Stanikis. <laughs> ChristyComedy.com. I got, uh, I'm working on stuff because I filmed my special already. And guess where I'll be? April 5th in Stanford, Connecticut, New York Comedy Club with Mike Cannon. And then April 6th, Stanford, uh, in Stanford, Connecticut, New York Comedy Club with Mike Cannon. He's producing, I'm producing his special. He's doing it. And he'll be there and I'll be there. And it's going to be the greatest night of your life. Then April 17th, I'm going to do a show in Dubai and get beheaded. But don't worry, I survived. Jasmine walked around with me with an ice bucket. So I got a show in the Dubai Opera House on April 16th, um, and then June 3rd in Belfast, Elsterhal, Belfast. Then we're gonna, we added June 2nd in Amsterdam. It might not be on sale yet, but it is coming. June 6th, Birmingham at the O2 Institute of Birmingham. June 7th, O2 Shepherd's Bush Empire in London. June 10th, New Century Manchester. June 11th, Hot Water Comedy Club in Liverpool. And Glasgow on June 12th in the SWG3 Galvanizers. I don't know. It sounds like a vibrator. And then June 13th, Dublin Island, Vicar Street. And then we just added June 22nd, Atlantic City, Caesars, Atlantic City, co-headlining with Sam Morrill. But that's not in the UK or Ireland. But you could still go if you want. And uh, ChristyComedy.com for tickets. And uh, you're, uh, you're going to see you're going to see something. You're going to see some stuff out there. So you'll do it. You'll do it. You'll come the UK and Ireland. Uh, we're going to the Mets game out there. Mets Phillies. Uh, Vito's going to come. I think maybe. I'm not sure. I have to. I have a 4:45 p.m. dinner reservation. <laughs> <laughs> that that whole thing's the promo. Just fucking stick it. <laughs> Prize Picks. Yeah. America's number one fantasy sports app with over 3 million members. That's as most, that's almost as many members as it is YouTube. Prize Picks are the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS. Damn DFS, it. dude. Daily yeah. fantasy sports. That's right. Sucker. <laughs> you Hold pick on. more. <laughs> It's just, here it is, folks. It's just you against the numbers. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and you watch the winnings roll on in. Here's an example. It's demon time on prize picks. <laughs> you can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. So demons. Here, <laughs> wait, should I go? Sorry. Do demons and goblins. Demons and goblins. <laughs> are the newest and most exciting way to play at prize picks. Squares marked with red demons or green goblins get you different payouts. You can now win up to 100 times your money with as little as four correct picks. That's it, baby. You want to play alongside some of prize picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Schultz. But you can now find community plays under the promos tab of the app to view entries for some of the biggest names in the prize picks community each week. Here's you go. Go ahead. <laughs> tell them where they get the code and how do they get a discount. I'll tell them. You tell go, them. Go to prizepicks.com slash chaos and use code chaos for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepicks.com slash chaos. Use the code chaos for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. And it ain't easy being cheesy. I'm crying, dude. <laughs> so a few days ago, a report came out with no source or anything that Aaron Rodgers years ago said somewhere yeah. that Andy Hook wasn't real. There was no proof. There was nothing. Right. Aaron Rodgers came out and said, that's not true. That's defamation of character. I never said that. I'm on record saying that Sandy Hook did happen. 
So, there which is go. a funny thing to be on record yeah. saying. <laughs> I know what happened. Yeah. I celebrate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking but, idiots. It just shows that you know, like when you run for when you run for president or vice president, like even on a joke level, like Aaron Rodgers, yeah. is, right. All of a sudden, you get scrutinized That's at for a sure. higher level than anything else. Yeah. This is and I think that was their like little buzz the tower thing of just like, hey, just a heads up. If you really want to get into this shit, it's fucking over for you, dude. Yeah. Anything you've said offhand, jokingly, whatever. You're a quarterback, not a comedian. Right. You can't even present it within the context of a joke because yeah. that's not your job. So this is what it is. This yeah. is what it's going to be. Yeah, they were just is getting a Is this just pure taste. peanut butter? No. I am just, I have just full <laughs> imagine chunky that's... skippy in the back of my throat and I can't. Like, Could you imagine I forgot to add the protein and the milk and I, they just gave us water look and peanut butter? Look at how it's separated. <laughs> it's, it's like, it's, I'm not kidding. There's so much peanut brittle in the back of my throat. I'm going to fucking die. I could kill it. all of Brooklyn if I sneezed right now, dude. It would be, It'd be funny over. if like you're having a deadly allergic reaction, like you're finally allergic yeah. to peanuts. And oh. we, and I'm. It was just too high to realize yeah. it. Is that when my heart is pounding? <laughs> oh yeah. Everything feels like it's closing tightly. What is this? Pig eye versus human eye. Um, this was going around because everybody said that looks exactly like Trump's face. I thought it was. <laughs> yeah. That's what I thought the bit was. That yeah. kind of looks more like my asshole with an eye looking out of it. <laughs> mm -hmm. That Gross. kind of, wow, that really does. Wow. Right. After you just ate a bag of carrots. <laughs> <laughs> That's really upsetting. That yeah. is. That Your is. asshole has eyelashes on it. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Irish. I mean, it does. My, I have like little, you know, I have, I have some ass hair. It looks like daddy as long legs. As long as you put mascara on before uh, Nicole eats it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I would never. I wouldn't wish my asshole on my worst enemy. Good. I wouldn't let her down there. It would yeah. be a fucking tough hang. She'd never come out. No. John. <laughs> first of all, John. I'd never kiss her on the lips again. <laughs> she, she, could, she could literally grow psychedelics on her bottom lip if she ever ate my ass. <laughs> John, how old are you again? Uh, 25. <laughs> All right, so let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think has happened. Tell me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. I think that I'm 39, mm -hmm. right? 39. So I'm 39. So like people 10 years younger than me, like I grew up when it's like the woke stuff started to happen and people start to go like extremely, like, like extremely crazy, like liberal to the point, like PC stuff where it was like, it was where it's all good. Like we're all Democrats, but it's like you're, you were like, people start to go fucking insane. Like people who are like 30, 32 now, like all the, whoa, cancel culture, all that stuff happened when I was like growing up, right? But now your generation, you're a little younger, you, you people, if I'm right, are more kind of starting to go the other way. Like 24 year olds, there's a higher amount of 24 year olds that are going to vote for Trump than 34 year olds, uh, right? Or do you, as the young kids? Maybe I mean I've never even voted before, so that's no, well, that's not great. That, but um, I don't, did yeah, you just I not feel compelled? So. Was it not stressed? I yeah, I mean I don't. I know. Like I'm not. That, ju I'm not like judging. By the way, I'm, I'm just I don't curious. Pay, like, any attention to politics, right? So, and that I've kind of that's kind of the same thing for most of my friends. I feel like, like that's the yeah that's the most common thing is that yeah. people are now just going like I don't want to. I'm vote. out. By the way, like, I said that's not great. I meant to say that's great. <laughs> when you said you don't vote. Because I just want you to feel positive in your decisions yeah. no matter what they are. Thank and you, I don't want you. society to pressure you. I want you to do what you think is right internally. And I don't want, and I, I always want to be supportive of you I mean, and, and positive on you. <laughs> if there was ever one to sit out, what, it does feel like this uh, yeah, is the yeah, one. Yeah. It's I, like, well, are we really yeah. running this dog shit back? The same two teams? But they say if there's going to be a winner... And you do that because there's going to be a presidential winner no matter what. If you don't vote, then that they say that counts as a vote for Trump because his sup fan base will oh, all of them will vote. And Biden's anyone who vote for Biden would be more like maybe I will, maybe I won't. This is what I think is going to happen. At least for me, is I'm like I'm going to wake up on election day. Like right now, I'm like I don't fucking want to vote. And then on election day, I'm going to be like, all right, I guess I'll fucking I'll just vote for Biden. But I'm like I don't want to. Like every time I see him, I'm like, oh, God, yeah. this is fucking rough. Like, wait, but your family, because everybody knows James Baker, Secretary of State, was he Republican or Democrat? Republican. Well, You're he was Democrat, and then he got, and then he became a Republican. Then he shape shifted. Then it's your grandfather. Yeah. Right. And so, and so that's what is he right now? Republican or Democrat? Republican. Oh, he's Republican. Okay, yeah. cool. Because I don't want you to, because if you know, 
If you're well, saying out here like that you're the- not going to vote for Biden, and then all of a sudden there's a red dot on your head. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden Rosebud's got naked on SNL shame ritual <laughs> with Cena written on her chest. <laughs> yeah, I'm dating Aaron Rodgers. Um, no, I feel like it's uh, it's just one of those things where I it's. He looks, whenever I see Biden now, I'm just like, this is like, it feels like elderly abuse every right. time I see it. And I'm just like, I, I know he wants to be there, but I'm like. He more than well, anyone. He's yeah. your grandpa's Apparently. age, right? Uh, or grandpa's he's older. He's younger than my granddad. But you, do you feel like your grandpa can run the country right now? No. Because of his age? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And then right. we got, you know. No, I mean, it's not, it's not okay. I don't know what okay. I'm saying. <laughs> you know what, you know where I think we should go? You know where I think we should go? Haiti. <laughs> Oh, didn't the mayor just say that uh, New York City is often called Porto Prince America or some horse shit? Did he? Yeah, he just really Yeah, you made it like that. <laughs> Fuck you, de Blasio. Oh, <laughs> Wrong I, one. The way oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Fucking idiot. <laughs> this weed took me back a couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, de Blasio. The, the way Chris just said Haiti, I like. I stared at the computer because it sounded like a segue to another topic that was on the screen, but there's nothing that says Haiti no. there. Like, where, did, <laughs> where did that come from? Um, the back of his subconscious. Yes. Very, very <laughs> back. Slammed. Slammed. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Haiti. Um, the Iron Lung guy died. Obviously. Yeah. Who's that? I, I think he's he like a guy. Is who that had this polio. guy Zac he Efron lived, played? He lived his whole life in this Iron Lung. Oh, I yeah. thought that we were talking about the Iron guy was Zac Efron played. Iron That's Iron Claw. Sorry. <laughs> Iron Claw. Iron Lung. Iron Curtain. This guy lived here his whole life. He yeah, lived in that in that six, fucking six thing his old. whole life. Yeah. He I'm lived like, in that thing his whole life. Yeah. Why? Why oh would you God. do that? I'm like I don't even believe that he's smiling. I would ask for a. For a specially made guillotine <laughs> to absolutely lop my head yeah, off same. at my 18th birthday. Where same. was his, uh, what's his lower half? Where did he do pee pee and poo poo? In the lung? In the lung. In the lung. Really? Could yeah. he even use a fleshlight in there? Like, does he have just <laughs> he years of built Nothing, up yeah. sludge in what his What would bed? he do? Like, he would just be fed his whole life. Like, I mean, just his whole life, right? Like, just, over he just over. never <laughs> moved. <laughs> 72 years. How, how would they take him around? Do they have like a contrap, like, to take him on a forklift? So, so what he said was. <laughs> he just looked like the back breathe. of a truck. <laughs> yeah. What was it, John? He, I'm sorry. He learned how to breathe without the iron lung by just gulping and forcing air down his throat. So that was the only way he could leave the lung. Because oh yeah, he's par- so they gulping just pushes air into your body <laughs> like that. Yeah, like the way that my kid learned how to breathe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. First, first day out of the liquid. You know when you blow air at them and they go like, <gasps> <gasps> yeah. <laughs> the way that Nicole would have to eat Mike's ass if she ever did it. <laughs> <laughs> Take, a, Take long, a hefty breath. Yeah. <laughs> dive in. That's wild, dude. That is kind of what my asshole looks like. Yeah. That guy, does. that guy poking out, Dude, smiling. Yeah, like, like you just shit out a full cabbage. <laughs> 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 just a hemorrhoid. <laughs> ah, that sucks that he died. So what are they going to... Are they going to... No, it doesn't. Does it, it is a celebration, <laughs> dude. It should yeah. have happened way that, earlier. Exactly. That Somebody sh- should have... Uh, I mean, any, <laughs> any just human would have walked by and been like, what's up, dude? And then thrown a pipe bomb exactly. inside of that lung Your and walked friend. away. He, you if know he had been one a good friend, friend he would have killed him a long time ago. <laughs> like the next... Like, it would have been good if, like, whoever the U.S. invades next, they just dropped the iron lung as the first bomb. <laughs> <laughs> they just dropped that guy. <laughs> that would be sick. That would be sick. And yes. the enemy gives up because they can't believe it. They're like, it's an exploding head bomb. <laughs> Ask not what your country can do for you. <laughs> that guy had polio too. That would be no, s- that was JFK. JFK. He got shot in the head. Yeah. <laughs> sure did. Sure did. <laughs> he got shot in the head. Imagine if they By shot him in the Well, they shot him in the head because he had polio. And they're like, you could wind up in the iron lung. Um. So, yeah, thank Season God he's 50. gone. <laughs> dude, it is. My fucking, this thing is starting look, to look like a Guinness, dude. It's all dude, being it's trying to look from like here. The, it looks like a flag. <laughs> it's more upsetting that mine hasn't changed texture yeah. at all. Yours it's, looks like it sucks. Yeah. Taste <laughs> but it. I got Taste the, it. Okay, I got the exact one that you asked me to get. I know. Well, no, you said this is the girl one, and I said I'll get that. It's not great. Yeah. But it's not bad, though. The aftertaste is good. A little coconut. It's actually yeah, not the terrible. The aftertaste is better. It's, not it's terrible, way better. Do you want, you want another straw? Are you good? What? Do you want another straw? No. Okay. But do you want this? No. Okay. I feel like I've never heard aftertaste used positively. Yeah, it's a positive aftertaste. That's the name of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> Season 50, positive aftertaste. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. You guys were... Oh. R.I.P. Hold on. 
Yeah. R.I.P. Iron segment. Lung. What's his name? R.I.P. Uh, no, the lung guy. Imagine those are your initials. What just happened to your Ronald, shoulders? My name is Ronald Ian <laughs> oh, Parsons. Dude, what just happened to your shoulders? You just got so like down on yourself for a second. You were popped back, sitting wide open Sometimes for a second. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes I get shy. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I get shy. Chris, I worked at Bar Mitzvah once for a kid, and his initials were ALS. And he had are a they? baseball theme party where everybody got a shirt. With his face on it that said ALS. On That's all awesome. good. That's yeah. good. Can everybody just get him a bucket of ice as a gift? <laughs> you ready? Yeah. I, I read something about ALS the other day. I am my a myotropic lateral sclerosis. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> <laughs> so I read a thing on ALS. <laughs> <laughs> so they Wait, real quick, I just want to say patreon.com slash Christy Comedy because the Patreon is where Chris is going to be really fucking high. <laughs> Right so lit. So so they said that the, they're starting to find research now about ALS that the people who are most prone to get it are um, uh, gardeners, people who garden a lot. Like if you're always out in your garden, because like the pesticides and the chemicals, oh. and farmers, Gar gardeners, farmers, and um, there was one other one, bug killer. Like no, so people like who breathe in a lot of chemicals. Like there's, it's linked. They're thinking it's linked to like a oh, those spray paint guys. Exactly. In Union Square. Oh, yeah. Yes, those guys. So I'm like, <laughs> what? Like, how did Stephen Hawking get it so low? His, his mom just had him out there with his face as a fucking rake. <laughs> <laughs> She was That's tending to not at all the tool I thought you were gonna. She, say. she was tending to the crop. She just had him by his feet. Yeah, open your mouth, Stephen, and just have him walk. Across. And then just got tilling the soil. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, dude. Pulling somebody backwards and having their <laughs> just teeth. Just, 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 just so eating up. a gallon of pesticides That's a day. That's how they got him across the beach at Epstein's Island, you know? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> um, okay, so speaking of that, Epstein's Island, parent of the week. <laughs> so, parent of the week, you know we do this, our POW, our parent of the week. Every week we talk about a parent who we pick because we're all parents here. We, you know, they did a good job. Did they do a bad job? You know, people at home, you can write into the show. Where can they write in and tell us where their parents of the week should be? You could go out, you could leave it on the community board at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. You could call our hotline at 347-323-3321. Get your voicemail read live on the show. Or you can email uh, Vito. You can email his personal email. <laughs> All right, Kate Middleton, Princess of Wales. Have it. Just Kate Middleton, who is Prince Edward's... Um, William. Prince William's wife. Who? So when <laughs> Prince Charles dies, Prince William, she'll be queen. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So queen, queen... Right now, she's not a full queen yet. No, she's also fighting for position. I don't know if you've gone deep on the TikTok, but they've uh, they've been saying that there might be another woman on the side that birthed William's child. Ooh. So she, in an effort to, I guess, uh, you know, concrete herself in the position of queen, is now saying, I'm fucking done. I'm not going out in public. You will not see me. I'm going to make sure that people know that you can't handle the public life without me. He's like falling apart. And uh, I guess she's now leveraging this there bastard is. child against him. I okay. can smell a car accident. <laughs> That's all alleged. I yeah. have no idea. So here we go. Kate Middleton, <laughs> Princess of Wales, has remained out of the public eye since December 25th. <laughs> oh, Merry Christmas, Tiny Tim. <laughs> Which is extremely unusual for a prominent member of the royal family. Oh, it's bloody Christmas! <laughs> on, ja on January 17th, Kensington Palace, which is in Kensington, put out a statement. <laughs> <laughs> put out a statement saying she's recovering from an abdominal surgery. Which has Twitter convinced she's getting a BBL, Brazilian butt lift. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. This past week was Mother's Day, but in the UK, so not the real Mother's Day, which is in May, near my <laughs> mother's birthday. <laughs> this week was Mother's Day in the UK, and the palace posted a photo with Kate and her three children sparking controversy over the clearly edited photo. People quickly pointed out obvious flaws and Photoshop fails. Duh. Like... 
Oh, there's no examples? <laughs> They're apparently like to the point where I think Twitter and all the uh, platforms have actually labeled it a fake picture. Wait, is it though? Like yeah. I'm not seeing anything from where, like, can we zoom into that? I zoom into it. I forget what the inconsistencies were, but it's like something with her hand, something with the sleeve. Like it may not even have been outside. The picture may so not have been. One, one thing with AI is that AI doesn't understand like depth of field. AI mm. doesn't understand how to put things in front of the other. So like uh, John's pulling up the picture right now. And then pull up and then pull up the flyer that you made and we'll show the fans who the, what the real picture is. One one weird thing is Whoa. John zooming in on the kids. Oh, that dick. is an AI. Dude. Oh, that is an First AI. First of all, thing. fingers crossed. What is this? The Truman Show? <laughs> did, like that's what the wife did during the Truman Show during the, the marriage. Fingers, all right, the I'm high. Who cares? Fingers are crossed. But so, what is the kids right? Are we looking at his right hand? So we're, it's everybody's fingers. So if you look at like the if you look at the girl in the red sweater's fingers, you can see that like it looks AI because the index finger doesn't really look properly like. This, it disappears. It, not only here, John, like John is an artist. He can actually. Explain. John is an artist. Yeah. So, and then you can also see like around her skirt, there's like feathering. Like that's that's not a real skirt. Like oh, it just yeah. kind of gets blurred out on the sides here, oh, that here. Line, that too, right? Yeah. Like that doesn't make any sense. Um, and yeah, all all their fingers are are weird. And you can see the lighting is not the same on her face. And oh, yeah. people, some sleuths found that this is a photo from her uh, Vogue cover. I I'm actually like think ago. I recognize that. That's yeah. yeah. And so what is they yeah. saying that like she hasn't seen her kids? Uh, or she's just not going to take any photos with the kids. So that's what it is is there's so much because <laughs> they released this picture and because they as the United uh, the UK press have not taken it down even though it's been proven to be fake. <clears throat> there's all these conspiracies and unknowns being thrown out. The theory that I said, the fact that like she may have been sick, she might be dead is another one. Like there's a bunch of conspiracies flowing. Wait, around. so go back, go back to the. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, here we go. This is this is the real picture. That's the real picture right there. <laughs> um, that's the real picture, and that and coincidentally, that on June seventh, June seventh <laughs> this year, you can code up there. The hands look good. June seventh, I will be at O2 Shepherd's Bush Empire. Nice in London. 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 Special appearance by Kate Middleton. Yeah, mm -hmm. first Especially, time, yes. first public appearance. Special <laughs> appearance by Kate Middleton, and she's going to look a lot like James Matter. <laughs> 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 so, so okay, so the conspiracies is that Mike said, this, but we're giving Kate Middleton uh, parent of the week because we do think even if she's going to CGI AI her kids into the photo, at least she's hanging out with her kids on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. Right? Is that why we're saying? <laughs> yes. What's the reason she's parent of the week then? Uh, because they put this out on Mother's Day. That's nice. It's yeah. It's That's just nice. the fact that we have no idea whether she's alive or dead. Yeah. Now, here's the thing, though, with the with this royal drama is something's definitely going on. Because if yeah. there was nothing going on, one of them would have been like, we're appearing together immediately. But since the fact that they're not, right, right there's right. like actually something that really yeah, happened. Something definitely is happening. Well, so like, he, he, is, it the, is it most likely that he got caught cheating? Well, William was... Uh, Apparently, like he was out at something for like kids. Like he was doing, he was going through his normal duties. Didn't answer any questions. Didn't anything like that, and didn't address it. Which again adds credence to the fact that it's like, then what the fuck is this? Yeah, like, like what's I mean, going even on? if you have to lie, like yeah, I mean, Bill and Hillary were out there within hours. Right. Being, right. They did it live from Rosebud's grandpa's house. <laughs> <laughs> they did it live from Ro Rosebud's in the back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, uh, I think I honestly think that if I this. Feels like he got caught cheating, and she's like, yes. "You can't survive without me." I think that's the that's that feels like the most. So she's gonna put him through some theory. pain a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, and also, I mean, there's something I I have. All this the men in that family don't have an ounce of charisma. They no, need, no. They need a hot woman next to them. Nor strong genetics. They're all like showing their inbreeding. I mean, yeah. Kate Middleton is beautiful. Yeah. yeah. She's smoking hot. Right. Um, what's it called? Nah, I forget. What? Okay. I, I don't remember what oh, I was okay. going to say. But keep swallowing your peanut butter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sucks. Okay, is this coming through on the microphone? I'm genuinely sorry because I'm like Mr. It's Ed not. right now. Dude. You have a little bit of fat guy voice right now where it's all like, oh, coming from the throat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm like Biden trying to summon my last bit of strength. So, for a good segue into our phone call this week, instead of a new phone call, the person we called two weeks ago with the two with the drug dealing kid and the two yes. like, oh, follow up. She called me back. 
I told her we would call her live. I just texted her. She said she's available. Let's do it. Let's wait, call wait, wait. Her. Can I tell? Can you tell me what the thing yes, was? Yes, tell Rosebud. Let so, her. Let her play. The, do we have the voicemail? Maybe she could just listen to it, or just paraphrase it. I can pull it up. Okay. You could just tell me too. Yeah, whatever. Whatever's going to be easier. So basically, this woman. <laughs> I don't want to make it hard. For she you. called a few weeks ago. She said she has a few kids. She has two who have autism. One who's a drug dealer. Uh huh. She doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. She asked them for parenting <clears throat> advice on these children. And what was the advice we gave them? Um, the advice you gave them was that the autistic kids should start helping the drug dealing yeah. kid. Yeah, because yeah. Because those guys know what they're Good doing numbers. when it comes to numbers. Accounting. Not a bad idea. Yeah. But the reason we wanted to call her was, she said she had four kids, and we want to know what the fuck's the deal with this other kid. True. God. Oh, okay. Drugs the drug dealer was That's doing. That's right. Let's okay. do it. All right, let's call okay. her. And what's her name? We'll find out, but I think it's Aaron. Aaron. Does okay. she, she want her name out there? What's her last name? What's her address? Here we go. There we go. What are you doing? I thought that was real. Oh. What are you doing? Hello. Hello, is this Aaron? This is her. Is this Chris? What, the, the, you are live on the Chrissy Chaos podcast. Let me patch you through to Chris right now. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> you have the same voice. That yeah, is yeah. Boo, boo, boo. Oh, yeah. It was just a mail conversation. We got Aaron on the line. <laughs> hey, Aaron. It's me, Chris. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. So, uh, and are you are you well? Do you feel well? How are your children? Anybody hit you with a chicken finger? Uh, it would be French fries, first of all. And no, not yet. Okay. And no, not, not yet. yet. And we did get it right that you are from Pennsylvania or Delaware County. <laughs> no, I'm from Philadelphia. From Philadelphia. Yeah. And, and and how was your Tuesday? The Tuesday was good. And actually, when you caught when I when I got the voicemail, I was sitting at Wawa. So it was you very were? sitting. Were you, drinking, were you drinking some water? Were you drinking some water at know. Wawa? Yes, I was. You were drinking water. Good for you. Yeah, and Thank it's on you. a Tuesday there. I got to go <laughs> buy a home. Let me tell you real quick. Since tell me. You guys have, since you've graciously called me back, how the tables have turned. A little bit of an update on the drug dealer, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> She's we love, steering the show. We'd love, love to hear that. it. Yeah, and sorry Mike isn't talking too much. He has peanut butter voice. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Mike's advice was actually really nice. And then yours was great, too, but... I didn't really want to bring him to Kensington too much. So Got it. he is actually on his way to a treatment center. Hey. Wow. Yeah, good. There we go. Yeah. So we got him going there. And Hold on. I'm allergic to rehab. Hold on. One, <laughs> one. Yes. Rose, I'm sorry to cut you off, Aaron, but because there was a thing that the oh. fourth, we're talking about, you had a mysteriously fourth kid. You just said, uh, well, you just I said see. that you were taking him to Kensington we're going to rehab. Kate Middleton, we just took the picture from Kensington's Palace. Is oh. are you Kate Middleton? <laughs> I am. Wow. It's a joke. It's a joke. I'm Kate Middleton. That's why I'm calling. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a joke. She's fine. That would be I amazing you, Kate. if Kate Middleton had a Philly accent underneath yeah. it all. All right, so Kate, so so what happened? Take, take me through it. To <laughs> it. Um, so you know, we found some things, and then I asked advice for the drug dealing part of it. The autistic piece of it is fine because I actually work with autistic pe people, <laughs> pieces, <laughs> and and probably sprinkled with autism, as is everybody that's on the phone right now. Damn uh, right, so, okay. Damn right. Yeah. sprinkled okay. with autism. So that's, that's good. It was just him, and then you know we found some other things, and he kept asking me about quaaludes because some old lady told him about it at Taco Bell, and then he was selling counter. Fit Louis, it went it went crazy in the matter of, of a month or so. So, um, but he's on his way to rehab now. Amen. Let me ask you a question: What is he going to do with that leftover product? <laughs> I will probably find somewhere to place it safely, such as my mouth, but only the teeth. <laughs> wow. Well, I was yeah. going to. I was wondering if we could sell it as merch. <laughs> You can sell the, the mushrooms as merch, and maybe they can be called like magic mics for my cannon. But there we go. The the, yeah. uh, the weed went straight to me, as did the vape. Okay. Good for you. D and yeah. the V. Yeah, you know, it happens. So, uh, um, wait, let me ask you a question vaginal birth or C sections? First vaginal, and then the twins were C section. And then my fourth, I actually adopted when she was three, three years old, about three. Got it. So she came out of your wallet. She keeps <laughs> straight out of my wallet for sure. Yeah. Season 50. Yeah. Season 50. <laughs> a lot of money. She 
calls me a lot. That's why I didn't mention her the first time. Aaron, <laughs> I'm asking, I mean, we have uh, the very talented and lovely Rosebud Baker on the show with us. She's also a mom, and she writes um, for Saturday Night Live. So, do you want to pitch her a mom joke? Um, I don't have any mom jokes. I'm sorry. This could have been my my debut. Got, just Rosebud's leaving. It up. Oh. Rosebud just walked off the show and almost just broke the microphone. Down. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, all right. Well, what are you going to do today? What's a Pennsylvania day like for you today? Uh, today I go into work. I'm taking my time because I own it. So that's always a plus. And then I'm going to go home to okay. my yeah, farm uh, okay. area. Yeah. We could all own a subway and a gas station. <laughs> own a place for autistic children. You do? Yeah, it's called I your box. It's called a subway. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. <laughs> so, oh, oh, my God. Well, you know what? That type of clientele doesn't listen to these oh. type of uh, you're a good person, Aaron. You're a good, oh. you're a good person. And a good sport. Thank you. And, and a good sport. If you ever need like an autism advocate, you got your girl. If you ever need a little bit of, you know, like <laughs> baby education, but your jokes are great and it doesn't offend me ever, just let me know. I got you. Wow. Love you, baby. I love it. Thank you. Oh. Thank you, Aaron. Love you, Aaron. Love you, Aaron. Love you, bye. Love you, Aaron. Bye. Love you, bye. What's up, everybody? Getting the worst possible angle of my soft jawline? Go to MikeCannonComedy.com for my tickets. April 6th. Oh, the lights have gone out. Nope. March. When is this going? March 21st through the 23rd. I'm going to be in Uncasville, Connecticut at Mohegan Sun. Comics Mohegan Sun Roadhouse. Come out to that. Uh, four shows. One show per inch. April 6th in Stamford, Connecticut. My special produced by Chrissy Wissy over here. Very excited. He's opening the show. So if you hate my guts, just come for the opening 20 minutes and then I'll just, you know, your ticket will fund the special. New York Comedy Club. Those tickets are almost gone. MikeCannonComedy.com. And then Emmaus, Pennsylvania, April 27th at the Emmaus Theater. Me, Michael T. Feeney, Brendan Sagalow are doing our yearly gig. That's going to be fun. I got a bunch of dates coming up this summer, this spring, and a baby. MikeCannonComedy.com. Please, for the love of God, come out so I can feed my children. This episode, guess where it's brought to you by Spring Cleaning Champions, Manscaped. Oh, this, baby. Yeah, this season, make sure to groom your carpets and drapes. Woo! With the leaders in below-the-waist grooming. Clear out that winter bush. With Manscaped, the Lawnmower 5.0. Watch your confidence bloom like the springtime flowers. Dude, after using Manscaped, I can finally say I have caught the spring fever. I do use this, by the way. It has a nice little light on it, which actually shows where you're trimming. It's got a guard so you don't cut the sensitive parts down there. Right. It's, a, it's a very effective tool, and I personally highly recommend it. Dude, and I like it because I don't like making a mess. Yeah. I'm always making a mess, and the fucking bad boy, Manscaped, Lawnmower 5.0, Waterproof, Ooh. waterproof shave in the shower, the bath, the ocean, awesome. in a pot of boiling water. <laughs> Imagine just pulling it out and shaving in the ocean. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> people all over the place. You charged it up just to. <laughs> Shit. Can somebody in my please listen to this podcast? Go go to go to manscaped.com, put in the promo code chaos. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code chaos at manscaped.com. Can you please go there? Go to that website, put in that promo code, get the lawnmower 5.0, and have a video of yourself shaving your pubes in the ocean and send it to us. Please, for the love of God, please, please, please do that. <laughs> I swear, if you do that, I don't even know what you're gonna get. Something, so I don't even know what to give you. <laughs> dude, just seeing fish float away with a mustache. My God, dude! Please shave your pubes in the ocean with manscape. Do it. Love you. Oh, but let me just also just want to say it one more time. Get twenty percent off and free shipping with the code chaos c h a o s at manscaped.com. That's twenty percent off and free shipping with the code chaos at manscaped.com. Nothing, Nothing like, like a, a little, little spring, spring cleaning, cleaning in your, in your pants. pants. Mike, yeah. I want a second yeah. to talk to you about sex. Let's do it. I want to talk to you. Is that all right? I I'm, I consent. You've been having any sex recently? Uh, for the first time in a while, actually, yes. Whoa. Yeah, felt good. Yeah? Quick, very quick. Well, I was told by your wife that it was too quick and the performance just wasn't there. No. So she told me to tell you that she prefers joy mode. <laughs> 
<laughs> you guys are having those conversations, huh? Yep. Joy mode. <laughs> That's right, gentlemen. Joy mode. We're not talking about pizza delivery, okay? When we're referring to your performance in the bedroom, we're talking about joy mode. That's why we partner with them. Gone are the days of sketchy gas station erection pills with the worst kinds of side effects you can imagine. I'm talking okay. about the heart problems, four-hour erection, and possible trip to the hospital. That's where Joy Mode comes, C-U-M-S, in. <laughs> Their sexual performance booster is an all-natural and science-backed supplement to give your disco stick all the tools it needs with nothing it doesn't. Simply mix this wonderful concoct. Shin, <laughs> six to eight ounces of water, or if you're in Philadelphia, water, 45 minutes before sexual activity and watch the magic unfold literally. Be the new sheriff in the bedroom and go to usejoymode.com for 20% off with code chaos. That's 20% off and free shipping with code C-H-A-O-S. That's right. Go to usejoymode.com and get 20% off with code chaos at checkout. That's 20% off and free shipping with code chaos at usejoymode.com, J-O-Y-M-O-D-E.com. Mike already said this. I can't wait. Season I 50. Mean, season, season 50, 50 dude. That, yeah. was, that was a Gronk spike. <laughs> yep. Slam! <laughs> Slam! <laughs> Magazine! Slam! Magazine. Chris, can I ask why it seemed you got offended when she said she likes your comedy? <laughs> Wait, no. oh, she said that it do it doesn't offend her, and then you made it because Mike noticed it as well. Yeah. But you made a face when she said her, your comedy doesn't offend her. That was a misplaced look. That I think I was reacting to something else from a few minutes ago in my head. I, I, I think it was. I think <laughs> you happens. reacted to the idea that it might be offensive, but, but it, she was not offended. Wait, oh, John, like can you help me fix this? <laughs> yes. Yeah, I mean, she was. Cool, she was cool as shit, dude. You have this like. Whip quick ability to ask something so invasive, but get somebody so <laughs> off their like balance <laughs> that they answer you right away. Yeah. yeah. Vaginal or C-section. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Right just away. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank get you. right into it. <laughs> Unreal. I love it, dude. Let's go to Canon Baby Names. This is a bit that we're doing every week where we told you. Well, Mike will explain. It's it. still undecided. We are, you know, we are completely open for business in terms of naming our our son to be. And uh, you guys, I have promised our audience that if you come up with the name, if we land on your name, the middle name will be your first name. It's what so, it is, folks. Were you bummed when you when it was a boy? No. Not even a. Slight. No, I mean, I would have loved to have a daughter. I would have loved to have one of each. But the fact that I can have that, I'm going to have brothers, and I didn't grow up with a brother. I think that's fucking yeah. sick. And okay. just, I mean, I'm excited. Yeah, I'm you get excited yeah. anyway. And Mike yeah. said he would live stream the circumcision on patreoncom yeah. Christy Comedy. You're goddamn right. And so, uh, whenever I have to dr redress the wound as well. Oh, yes. Good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's Man, so, that was the most upsetting part. So here we go. Part. <laughs> this is from Nick Fay. Nick Fay19 at gmail.com. This is. He had about Maxton, M-A-X-T-O-N, Nicholas Cannon. Maxton is kind of a funny name, and Nicholas would be good because that's both his name and just the male version of my wife's name. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, so but that's out though. But it is a good. It is. A, it that, is a good was, I can't. Maxton. I don't even know what that Maxton is. Maxton is insane. Yeah. Just yeah. why would you go Maxton? It sounds like an Ivy League kid on steroids. Yeah. It just sounds like somebody mis like misspelled it or yes. something. Yes. Matthew. Matthew. Dream <laughs> Dream 2122. He's picked the baby names and it is clear as day that he just picked who he thinks would vote for Trump and who he thinks would vote for Biden. He's picked Nathaniel or Amir. <laughs> he's just, I love that. Whichever way you want to go. If you want to go... <laughs> you want to go suburbs or just full? Yeah. Do you want your kid to vote for Trump? Then it's Nathaniel or Amir will vote for Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Hideki. I like Hideki. Hideki. Yo, Hideki is sick. Hideki Matsui Cannon. I, hate I like that. that. Hideki is a. <laughs> I hate that. Do you, do you name your kid like a a, a oh. Japanese first name like that is kind of wild. They would never do that with our names. Have I, I said it you before? You don't live in Portland. You can't do that. I've pitched legitimately, and I think if I think I could be convinced to carry this through, I pitched LeBron <laughs> to my wife, <laughs> and she, you know, she said no. Yeah. But uh, I do think that would be a really funny white kid name. LeBron. LeBron. Like, hey, yeah, nice I love to meet that you. You're like, the let's, name's let's LeBron name, Cannon. <laughs> let's name that kid per let's name that kid that permanently for the bit. <laughs> <laughs> What's LeBron backwards? Uh fuck. <laughs> Nobler? Norbidge. Nobler. 
Norbidge. Norbidge. <laughs> no. Norbidge. LeBron. Norbidge. Neo. Norbell. Norbell, yeah. Norbell. Norbell. Norbell Cannon. Norbell. I like it. <laughs> I like that too. Norbell. And Norbell. my daughters love those little circle cheeses. I think they're called Babel. They're called Baby Bell. Baby Bell. Mm -hmm. Babel is a place where you can learn different <laughs> languages to, if you want to hang out with John's girlfriend. <laughs> Ex girlfriend. Sorry, the next one won't speak English either. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Croy. Croy Cannon from John Blatt's 4801. We kind of like Croy. <laughs> Do we? Right? Yeah. Croy's not bad, but then you got to think about it. Croy Crew. Croy Crew, yeah. That's that's tricky. We kind of like Croy. Yeah, I like a name named after I a saint. Did. It's I a saint's did. name. Is it? St. Croy. Isn't that a drink? LaCroix. Yeah, La Croix. Oh, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. yeah. Right. St. Croix's an island. I don't know, dude. <laughs> Crewmates. Yes. Mates? Crewmates. Mates. This is from XX3 Wicked XX119. Baby name Mates. Dot, okay. dot, dot, crewmates. Crewmates. Like crewmates. Like these like, are my kids' crewmates. They're yeah, crewmates. It's not like it's not like you're naming, you're giving your other son the last name of this, this name. This <laughs> yeah. is no, it's my first son, it's the sequel. Well, see, it doesn't <laughs> so that's, that's how I will name him. <laughs> It'll be crew two, second son, canon. <laughs> Casper the friendly canon. I mean, that's not bad. I not bad. That. That's but from Casper Mike. is also the person that gave uh, Chloe Savigny AIDS in kids, so I can't do that. Yeah. Don't worry. You're it's me, Casper. Pale. What huh? about AIDS? You're too pale. AIDS? <laughs> AIDS. Keep them thin. Just as a nod. I mean, Just fucking as a nod. AIDS. Fucking AIDS. Baby names, Link or Flynn <laughs> from Marlena Cool. I don't mind uh, Link. Flynn reminds me of uh, the... The crutches kid from Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Just slow talking. Mm hmm <laughs> Call the baby clan. Call the baby Crew clan. Crew clan cannon. <laughs> Crew oh clan cannon. <laughs> Crew clan. Oh, my God. <laughs> J. Poppy 7. <laughs> J. Like Poppy's that. still wearing a mask. COVID's over. <laughs> <laughs> That's from Marcus the Maniac. Baby Parks. Name. Parks. I don't mind Parks. I don't like Parks I, don't, I kind of like Parks. That's cool. Parks I don't mind is that. cool. Yeah. Parks. All right. That's Parks. This is my son, Crew. This is my son, Parks. Across so the board, So Parks yes. is the closest we've gotten, but yeah. then you're going to have to name your middle name's going to have to be Marcus. Parks Marcus Cannon. <laughs> Parks Marcus Cannon. <laughs> That's, That's not actually bad. sick. <laughs> that That's is a not bad. Name. All right. Write it down. Marcus Parks. Graham. Craig Kuna for a girl is Millie, but we know it's a boy. Yeah. I well, mean, allow so we'll far. see. It's just it's deciding. And then for a boy, Graham. Milligram. Milligram. Oh, I like that. I like Ga yo. Wow. It's Have crazy a boy named Graham, name him Millie. <laughs> <laughs> that did take, it still took me, took I actually guys. didn't get it the first time you said Miller that, Cannon. and now I get it. <laughs> I can't believe Jesus that. Christ, I am floating in the abyss of retardation like stayed, right now. It feels like I've stayed on the couch and both of their bodies have floated <laughs> up to the ceiling. No. Cash Cannon, I don't like. Brittany Carvalho. Was that all the peanut butter? That was so much yeah. peanut butter, dude. It's, I am, I mean, call me <laughs> George me Washington so, Carver. You looked am, at me so <laughs> scared. He coughed and he went, I looked over and he was like this, like, did you Has anyone that? drowned in peanut butter? No. That might be, no. My, <laughs> that might I, be like I might be are. the first guy. Yeah. Kai, How you doing? I, I, hmm? How you doing? <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> yeah. I just looked over and you have that beet red stone look. So I was like, yeah. how you doing? Brittany Carvalho. <laughs> Dude, Brittany Carvalho sounds like she's hot again. Meaning like she was hot when she was 18. Everyone was like, God, Brittany, love Brittany. Then she got married to someone like finance guy or maybe he's a firefighter. I'm not sure. They have a couple of kids. <laughs> She puts on weight because it's like, you know, life happens, whatever. But now she's like 37. She she got divorced. Yeah. And but she but and she's getting hotter again. She had a breast cancer scare. You got uh, all of this from the name. Yes. Yeah. She had a breast cancer scare. She got herself in dark shape. hair, light eyes. Dark hair, light eyes. And she's now like, she's like not 18 year old Brittany, but she's like a really, really hot 37 year old. And you consider her because you're like, she's raised children. She's been through a lot of things in life. She probably. Her credit's back up. Her credit's back up. She probably won't be a problem yeah. because she's got something other than you to focus on. She's going to focus on her kids and then her ex husband and then you. 
and you kind of start to think maybe that's an easy life. Uh-huh. That's Brittany Carvalho. <laughs> Season 50. Season 50. <laughs> that's the monologue. Cold open. Yeah. yeah. How about this? From Anthony Procino, who was, who was Brittany Carvalho's ex-husband. Uh, <laughs> 70, 87. This is kid named Peppo. Peppo Cannon. No. No, Nicole wants to go. She Pass. suggested middle name Peebo because that's the name of her, her grandfather. Pass. Like, yeah, you know no. what you should name it? The baby, one of the names of the dead cats you have buried in your backyard. <laughs> Frank? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you know that, Rosebud, that he buries his cats in his backyard? Well, yeah. where else are you going to bury them? Well, one time we, we were going to go on the road together. I forgot where we were going to go. We were going to go to Arlington Draft House. Arlington Draft House, and he calls me the morning of, like, yeah. legitimately crying. Yeah. Uh -huh. Like, my cat just died. Right. <laughs> dude, I was watching it as I was on the phone with yeah. you, still kind of flickering. And I was like, dude, don't even worry about it. Like, you know, it's fine. Like, you know, obviously, whatever. Then I checked in with him when I got to the, you know, whatever, a few hours later. And I was like, how was it? He goes, he was like, you know, it's so sad. We just buried him. I said, wow. Like, would you have like a service come over? He goes, no, I dug a hole and I buried my cat in the backyard. And I was like, I'm not talking to him anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I dug. Dude, is that not weird to have dead animals buried in the yard? Or again, Vito, is this a city versus suburb thing? We're in the suburbs. Everybody buries their pets in the backyard. We're in That's the city. true. We can't imagine doing that. Yeah. I mean, for me, when you said that's fucking nuts, I was 100% on your side. But then when Rosebud followed up and said, where the fuck else would you bury it? I was like, I guess that's true. Like, what are you going to do? Throw it away? Well, it costs money to take it to the vet and for them to throw it in the incinerator. Right. It so, costs like 700 bucks. Yeah. So I took one of those. I'm a fucking man. And I got yeah, some beer and I pounded beer and cried. And I fucking dug a goddamn hole because mm -hmm. that's what men do in the face of death. I, I carried a 220 pound. Pound dog, Great Dane, down five flights of stairs. Dead. Dead, dead weight, dead dog, and brought it to a fucking incinerator to be burned and thrown away. How did you get? Did you just walk down the streets of the west side with no, a dead I, dog? I actually got into f multiple arguments with car drivers because they were like, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> Wait, that. what? Yeah, you, I you get it, dude. Not. I'm on the Uber. So imagine you pull up to an Uber. <laughs> this guy looks like Wreck It Ralph holding a fucking dead great. <laughs> dead Dead animal. Be like, I swear to God, I don't want to eat this. Don't worry. It's already That's evacuated crazy. its bowels. You're He's like, I can't eat this. I'm in my fasting window. <laughs> it was also at 2 a.m. I mean, this is like, what? Dude, this was one of the most traumatic things. You're lucky you were thrown in prison, this dude. This was the most traumatic thing that's happened in my life. This fucking dog. I, I laid with it for hours. It was like, I could hear it dying. I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm like calling, I called uh, the pet ambulance a bunch of times because I was like, I, this dog is too That's not a real number. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what is the <laughs> pet ambulance? No pet, one. There's, like a, there's a mobile vet, like a pet ambulance. No, but call. I'm saying they might what? say that there is, but there's no one on the other line. I there love that the pet ambulance today is just like one of those Uber Eats drivers. It's got <laughs> yeah. a basket in the front. It's like, put it in. <laughs> so, <laughs> with the gloves on the bike. <laughs> yes. So I, I, and if I, he still has orders, he gives you a <laughs> shitty protein shake. <laughs> <laughs> so Sorry. I laid with it. This dog was it was just, it was it was really bad. And then all of a sudden, hours later, it lets out a yelp. Its head falls down, and then blood starts pouring out of its mouth. Stop! This is what? your dog. This is my Stop dog. It. What? Blood starts pouring out of its mouth, and it's a two hundred twenty pound dog. So it's a lot of fucking blood. There was a pool of blood all oh. over the. You floor. had a Great Dane in a. Great New are great for the city. They don't like to move a lot. It's a big misconception. That really? They so they're good yeah, for they're apartments. Filled with blood. They're filled with blood. They're filled with so wait much a, blood. With blood. Wait a second. Wait a second. So they don't like to run. They don't like to move. They want to chill. How long do you have this dog? How can it? It, it died at six. At because, six. Because uh, it's a fucking horse. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. Because it couldn't. Yeah. It couldn't walk around your apartment. So <laughs> you raised it like veal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So the fucking dog starts pouring blood out. I'm freaking. I'm like, oh my god! I don't. Do it. I'm trying to clean up the. My girlfriend at the time is crying because it's like, she's going through. She's it watching as well. blood pour she's out of her dog's mouth. Pour out of the dog's mouth onto our floor. You thought she was crying because of that, but it's really just like a good scene in Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> um, I, ca I call Carmel. I'm like, yo, I need a, I need a ride. They're like, no, we're not coming to pick you up and your dead dog. And then I'm calling multiple places. Finally, one of them is like, yeah, I guess we'll pick you up. Uh, I have to pick up this dog, like I said, 220 pounds, and I have to carry it down a small fucking stairwell in an apartment building. Why didn't you take the elevator? It was a walk-up. 
Oh, shit. So now but, you're covered in blood as well. I'm covered in blood. Right, yeah. Well, okay, that's a good question. So it question. looks like you killed the dog. I Probably mean, looks like or you killed the dog. a lot of people. But it were, was the all the blood gone? Like, it stopped pouring out of the dog once you started carrying it down? I or it was blood, still... I let the blood pour out before I made any moves. Where? In your whole... Just on the floor? On you the didn't floor. bring it I to mean, the tub? I there's not much you could do at that point. You didn't bring it and to it, the tub? No, you're not going to move him. No, we didn't no, I, him. I'm just I'm getting a picture of this because it's so fucked up. Dude. Yeah, it was just in the bedroom, <laughs> in the bed. And here's oh. the thing: it originally started when it started dying. It was in the living room, and then I tried to get it to the bedroom to like, I put it in the bed. Right, right. To, like, was it sick, the dog, or this came out of nowhere? It had cancer. Okay, it had cancer. So then, head pulls over, blood starts pouring out of the mouth, and this is the thing. Luckily. The head was on the edge of the bed, so when it when it turned its head over, all the all the blood poured off off the bed onto the floor. Oh Stop my god! Pool. It's awful of the I dog. carry it down yeah. the stairs, and like getting it down, like it's fu- dead weight is not easy to carry, especially an awkward ass Great Dane. So I'm doing like a workout carrying this thing down the stairs, and then finally the car driver comes, and then he says, "No, nobody told me that there was a dead dog," and I was like, "I went over this with your fucking boss." And then he was like, he was making faces at me. He like put up, he put down like a bunch of like a bunch of sheets and stuff. He acted like he was going to throw up the whole car ride. Oh acted? God. He, he like, I, all, I think I would have had a tough time with that. If you saw a dead fucking giant five foot fucking dog with blood pouring out of its face, it I would have been like, foot, it was six foot on its hind legs. Like, <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. Dog. So you're in the back, he's <laughs> gagging, and you're like, shut up. Yeah, it's not being like, a I pussy. Was like, I was like, shut the fuck up. I was like, because I just watched my dog die like pretty traumatically. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I didn't have time for this guy like making it about him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, How you were correct to feel that way, and yeah. he was very correct to feel yeah. his way. Yeah. And then. <laughs> I bring it over, and then like they bring a gurney. The vet, uh, a vet place on in Midtown, brings the gurney outside to me, and then we put the dog on. And the guy comes up. He's like, "Uh, you want to say any final words before we bring him in?" And I was like, "I guess." And then like I spoke to the dead dog. He walks over, and then he goes, "Oh, one more thing." And then he hands us the dog collar, and we were like, "Thank you." And then that was the last time I saw that dog. What did wow. you say to the dead dog? <sighs> I think I was just like, thanks for being a great. Do- I don't know. I was. I don't remember. That was, it was a very traumatic. Experience. Thanks for being thanks a great for- Dane. <laughs> <laughs> what about Dane? Cook. Dane Cannon. Dane Cannon. Dane's great good. Dane Cannon. What if his name is Great Cannon? I kind of like that. It's kind of cool, I mean, right? He's gotta be a porn. Then his star middle name point, is Dane. Though. Great Dane Cannon. Yeah, a porn star or like an outfielder. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Great. I'm great gonna go cannon. ahead and say both of you are gonna hate that idea later. Great. Right. Yeah. All right. I, I'm, I'm going to wager that both of you are going to go, wow. <clears throat> when I was in high school, there were these two really, like, excellent basketball players. They were brothers. One's bro- Their last name was Map, and one of their first name was Scientific, and the other one was Majestic. What? Scienti- Google Scientific and Majestic Map. These kids were, like, unbelievable basketball players. That's uh, wild. Yeah, that's kind of wild names, right? Not that good. Map or Map? Because we haven't Map, heard about them. M-A-P-P. Scientific huh? and majestic. That doesn't even necessarily no well, basketball. You Google fit. scientific map. You get a just lot put of in scientific map basketball. Come on, John. Or put scientific <laughs> and majestic map basketball player. Scientific <laughs> scientific map. Chris's friend basketball. There you go. Oh, he played for yeah, Seton Hall. M A P P. Huh? M A P or M A P P? M A P P. Okay. You recognize any of these men? No. <laughs> okay. But th- you see the names though, right? Is it this guy that looks kind of like Jordan Peele? You see the names, though. Yes, right? that's him. Is that him? What is that from? The Sabre. You see the names. That's him, though. number 22 in black. You could have just been like, hey, type <laughs> these names up. There's no... no- oh. you Did see? you find it? Wait, you're looking at the screen. <laughs> All right, John, Google this. You asked us to look for a fucking high school basketball player from 20 years ago. Yeah. Google this. Majestic, majestic map basketball high school Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't put in high school or Chris. <laughs> what high school? I don't high know. Look, I feel like my mom is asking you to look up. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be him. That's him. What's that guy's name? That's scientific. Majestic map. map. Boom. That's his name. First name Stapleton. <laughs> 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 right? What is happening? John, is that kid's name Majestic Map? Uh, he's not a kid. He's like 40. So Yeah, he's but... 39. Okay, there you go. I'm 30. Exactly. That's right. 
<laughs> so why do you want us to look at Because Jazz is friendly. That's what I said. <laughs> Who are you fighting with, Jazz? <laughs> yeah. here, here, here's, the, here's the thing with Jazz. She'll be like drama with her family, like, you know, whatever, like talking and fight. And then she'll get off the phone. She goes, oh, my God, I cannot take them. And I'm like, what happened? And she's like, is it right if my sister and her kids stay here for three days? <laughs> And I'm like, all right, <laughs> come on, they can sleep in the trunk. I got a Lincoln Navigator. <laughs> Chris, Chris, really? You're disgusting. <laughs> if these bitches knew, if these bitches knew, writing hard faces on your comments, if they knew how disgusting you were, what I have to deal with, they would not look at you the same way, honey, because I deal with you eating your boogers, biting your fucking disgusting toenails, mm -hmm. biting your fingernails, being disgusting, <laughs> and I still deal with you. So these bitches don't know what I have to deal with, all right? Now, what do you want? <laughs> what do you want? You want the peanut butter and banana on the rice cake because you're trying to lose weight, or you want it with the bread? <laughs> That's an exact... <laughs> I mean, season 50. <laughs> season 50. <laughs> That is exactly, that last part was from the front of my brain. <laughs> that was as clear of a scene as I've ever heard. <laughs> That's a clip? Is that where you give me a thumbs up? Chris, Chris comes on to host and he goes, all right, so tell the cast to take the week off. I'm going to play every part in the, yes. in the fucking sketch. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And I'm not going to change costumes. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> the whole body. Yeah, you know what? You guys have a pod, pod studio around. Just put me in front of a mic on a couch. <laughs> yeah, <that's it. laughs> tell set designer to take the week off. That's the show. Everybody relax. It's Ninety minutes. I'm like parent of the week. <laughs> So that was a thumbs up for that was a clip, and you're at an hour and 47. Oh. An hour and four <laughs> oh my God, that's insane. Did you have to I go, Rosebud? I wasn't no. sure if we had done an hour. I don't have I, to go. Yeah, no. So I let's thought we'd been here for 45 minutes. Do oh. we, like, what? Okay, here's the thing. Keep going. What's the next thing? And then we'll finish. I think we got all the things. Look at, <laughs> we did all the things. <laughs> Look at Rosebud. That's Rosebud's pubes. <laughs> Put them on a phone case. They have teeth. They have teeth now. No, we didn't do finish everything. What, what what did we not do that's on this list right here? Listen to a voicemail. We, we, call, we called said, someone. I, I do have a voicemail. We that was this show? Oh, yeah, you're right. Oh, wait, we did. Show. We called somebody. <laughs> yes. Do you okay, fine. Put, yes, fine. Put on a voice. Now that's what you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> you requested it. Put it on. <laughs> Miss Rachel, put Dude, it in. This put is going to be a live in. show. In. <laughs> that makes me so uncomfortable when Miss Rachel does that song. Yeah, I know. Because I, I'll be singing to her. Because that's how I sing I mean, Miss Rachel, Andy. she must yes. be a billionaire. Her overhead oh, yeah. is $9. She must make like a quadrillion dollars. She's, all the yeah. money's going towards the nipple rings. It's she have nipple rings? Yeah, that was a big thing. What? Yeah, so. Yeah. What? You, you, you were about to say something about the nipple rings? <laughs> you up. wanted him to bail you out. You know, about to, I went to say something, and then he said, "Yeah." Then he, I thought he was about to speak. Miss oh. Rachel should start an OnlyFans. Oh. oh my God, she would. You, that would be number one. Like she, I guarantee, if she started OnlyFans, I think she'd make a hundred million dollars in the first month. Yeah. Every single kid's dad is going to that OnlyFans. Yeah. 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 And some of the moms, you big lesbos. <laughs> <laughs> Voice <so> mail. <laughs> hey, Chrissy and Mike. My name's Amy. Uh, my question for you is, how would you handle a situation if you found out your spouse was having an emotional affair? I found out my husband, who will be 50 in April, was having an emotional affair with a 24-year-old employee of his um, after denying it many times i ended up finding saved birthday cards and other cards that she'd given him and then i finally was able to see text messages that he thought he deleted um but did not where he definitely was having at least an emotional affair he says it wasn't physical i doubt it but whatever so i was wondering how you would handle that situation moving forward love the podcast Bye. 24 I 20, mean, yeah. talk about the absolute worst part of a 24-year-old. Yeah. Why would you emotionally cheat 
with a 24 year old. <laughs> you, you enjoy her conversation. Yeah. Your husband is a moron. He, listen, <laughs> it's, a, he, it, it's dumb. It all depends on this, babe. Okay. First of all, like, what did I tell the people the last time? Love is chemicals. If you're really in a bad breakup and you think you're in pain or love someone you don't, it's just the chemicals. So what you got to do is drink a lot of water. You'll pee it out. And then about three to four weeks, you won't be as in love as you are because love is chemicals. And so <laughs> That's this- the most insane thing I've ever heard. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> it's literally true. <laughs> I've just been accepting it as yeah. fact week after week. That's I'm like, that sounds You right. will pee out the That's chemicals. No, that could, no, no part is of that. Is that not sounds- true? You can't piss love out. No. It's uh, literal chemicals can't. that if you just drink more than average water and don't take as much creatine, you'll pee it out. <laughs> 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 you'll pee out your love for said person. You, everybody, what's said the advice cannon. line? What? Three- said cannon. That's the, the name. name. Said? Said. <laughs> like said, said? Like, you know what someone says? Said, ca- like, said, per- I just said said person. Said canon. <laughs> S-A-I-D. I said it. Canon. I can't. You've gotten. <laughs> Why did you, Rose, like, you only included us in the very <laughs> last part of that conversation. Why did you have <laughs> most of it in your head and then slammed said canon? Don't Why say- did- don't say that he had, don't give him the credit of having had a whole conversation to lead up to that. There was no, there was no logic that just came out. Like, the fact that Mike is so high that he can make sense of what you're saying is insane. I speak fluent, Chris. This, fluent. This 100%. woman's marriage is about to crumble, and these two fucking idiots are, are literally going, they're just speaking psychobabble. Why did, why did Rosebud come to the show dressed like she needed to paint the studio. (laughs) That's actually a good question. I like it. (laughs) I'm into it. Okay, here's the advice, lady. Great, Chris. I I just need you to do me a favor in the future. If you want to do an advice show, you can't give the same advice every week. Okay. So love... (laughs) You don't think so? I was prefacing the advice (laughs) with just saying that, obviously, as we say every week on the show, that love is a chemical and you would pee it out in 21 days. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that, that is that is the message of this podcast. Stop nodding. <laughs> it's so, true. It's very true. So I think that <laughs> probably for women, emotional cheating is worse than just having sex. Like sure. if the guy was having sex, you'd be like, this sucks. And maybe you still divorce him. But the emotional thing is what hurts the most. But I don't know. I do think that the stresses of marriage, especially in, even in today's world, are very difficult and I think that it doesn't mean that he doesn't love you if he's emotionally cheating on you. I think he probably has to stop it and you have a decision to make if you want to carry on. But I don't think you should take that as he doesn't love you and he loves her. He can be, I'm sure he loves you the most, but he's just looking for something different because let me remind you of a quote that Machiavelli said. <laughs> the famous evil man. <laughs> the famous Machiavelli, okay? The famous Machiavelli. Let me remind you what your husband is probably guilty of right now as ours are most people in the human race. Men desire novelty to such an extent that the rich man wishes for change as much as the poor man. So people just want change and they just want novelty. And that's what your husband was looking for. And I think if you cut it off now and he tells you he's not in love with her, you could probably believe him and you could carry on with him or you can divorce him and send me your titties. or, Or you could cheat. Yes. You could get even. If he wants change, you could cheat. There you go. There you go. Open relationship. Or, I mean, if you do carry on, then it's on both of you to also communicate. You don't just carry on and be like, well, glad that's over, and then just be assholes. You have to actually get better at communicating and talking to each other because you clearly fell out and he sought that attention elsewhere. Can you hear the peanut butter? But that's what happened is he sought attention elsewhere. He got it. It's because you guys fell out of communication. So if you're going to carry on, you have to get back to that. Right. Well, that's the actual good advice. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Edibles. That's good. But I'm also edibles. drink more water. I need water. Is there water in this building? No, you're going to pee out your love for your kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a good voice, man. I hope you got some advice. I know that that's painful. Um, and I know that it's, uh, you know, it's not easy. And that t- emotional cheater, as John's girlfriend would say, emotional. Emotional. <laughs> <laughs> emotional. I'm emotional cheating. I am for Spain. Oh my God. 
Twain. Oh, you said cheating Jamaican. Do you go cheating? Cheating. cheating. Yeah, cheating boy. Cheating. <laughs> yeah, emotional yeah, cheating. Yeah, you can't. You can't. You can't cheat. You can't. Stop. <laughs> oh shit! I was supposed to take Jasmine to see that Bob Marley movie, and I never did it. <laughs> <laughs> Damn! I never did it, and instead, yeah, I made her come with me to see Ricky Stenicki, <laughs> which we loved. Well, take Bob Marley's advice and don't worry. Don't <laughs> be happy. About <laughs> okay, what's the meme generator? Oh no, this is just a meme that you guys remind me of right now. Let's see it. That's it. What do you mean? Oh, just oh, three just little those. boys. <laughs> three little boys on a couch. Yeah. <laughs> Rosebud is the one with the hat on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the two on the right are just talking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> and the You're one the in the hat is going, both of you aren't making any sense. <laughs> I think we're really locked yeah. in. No, yeah, I know you do. Yeah. You're at two hours. Speaking of, oh, I was going to say, speaking of locked in, you, uh, you want to see some shit locked in? I got a couple of places you can go see that. First of all, <laughs> New York Comedy Club in Stamford, April 5th. Um, I think I'm recording a comedy out. I don't know what I'm April doing. April 5th is sold out. April 5th sold out, bitch. Yeah. And you can see me and Mike Cannon. And then Saturday, April 6th, that's the big one. Yeah. Come see that show. Mike Cannon is doing his hour special. Yeah. Hour special. He's doing it. I Produced will be there. Produced by? Produced by... Uh, first production. Give first a hand production ever. to Christopher. By me. To Stefano. First production by Love is Chemical Productions. That's, great. <laughs> and, That's a great yeah. fucking, yeah. And then, and then, so you're going to see that. And then, uh, and then April 16th, I'll be in Dubai. And then the first two weeks of June, I will be in the UK and Ireland. And we've added June 2nd in Amsterdam. In Amsterdam, I'm going to do a show in, uh, you know, for uh, the flyer will be me as Anne Frank. <laughs> this is the flyer John just did for Belfast. He put that's me as dope. Georgie Best at Ulster that's Hall. Great. That's June 3rd. So we're going to be flying from Amsterdam to Belfast. I'm surprised you didn't do something insanely divisive. <laughs> Dude, we got to post this. When are we going to post it? <laughs> I just went live. When? Uh, while we were recording. What are the comments? Uh, Is it just girls' butts being like, love, you know, like like the, those bots? Yeah. Those, uh, what do they say? Like lucky. They say pussy in bio is P a big one that I see a lot. Pussy in pussy bio. Pussy in bio. That's cool. Any good comments? Bio. What do we got? Uh, the George Best Manchester, not Ireland, mate. Can't wait to see you in the pool. Great. Nice. <laughs> so I've got it wrong. Any? Are there more wrong ones? No, that, it's mostly praise. <laughs> okay. That's like when I won when I pissed everyone off because I we were going to the UK and Ireland and I had John make a flyer that the name of that part of the tour is called Chrissy the Ally and I had John make a flyer <laughs> and I put you know like countries in the UK and then. Ireland is not in the UK, and I just put them all together, which is wildly offensive. And then the flyer was my face with just planes and bombs and tanks blowing <laughs> oh up everything God. where they're still in an active civil war <laughs> in some parts of the country. So and people, the promoter of the show said, I need Chris to take that down. I, as a human being, am offended. <laughs> <laughs> like, it had nothing to do with like the company. They were like, me, the promoter of the show, would like you to take that down. <laughs> and I mean... Oh, um, my God. Do we have the first one, John? Oh, I'm gonna the first one was <laughs> fucking nuts. Imagine uh, it would be like they told me it would be like if you were like uh, a foreigner and you were doing a show in America and your flyer was you and the burning Twin Towers behind you. <laughs> 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 and then be like, come see my shit. <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> come see my shit. <laughs> so the promoter told you this? The promoter oh. email texted the Italian woman, Emilio, our agent, and said he needs to take that down. I'm wildly offensive. And it absolutely affected ticket sales. <laughs> 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 He's fucking Rosebud. What do you have this to promote? Is a sick poster. That, that is, is a sick, sick. fucking oh, poster, that's dude. Dope. I was gonna oh, but I, yeah, you can't have. I didn't realize that. And that the flag, flag is behind yeah, it. It's oh, crazy, yeah. dude. Yeah, that's a <laughs> it'd be like saying to some people, it'd be like saying, I'm coming to perform in Israel and then have the Palestinian flag 100%, behind me. That's, wild. 100%. that's what it is. Yeah. And then the tanks are in the front of it, just that's bulldozing so our way through your war torn country. So insane. And you looked at, I mean, you dude, should have a Molotov you in your office. You were like, yeah, print it. Yeah, do it. I was like, you know what? I got a huge European tour. I really need to sell this out. Let's go with this. And yeah. then nobody bought tickets in any of the countries. <laughs> <laughs> but then we changed it, and now the tickets are. They're not great, actually. As a matter of fact, <laughs> like, 
Like you really should go to ChristyComedy.com and get the tickets because like I swear to God, if some of these shows don't pick up, I'm not coming. So you, <laughs> so you got to go because I'm going there to the Mets are playing the Phillies in London. That's um, really sick. Yeah, so we're going to go to those games. So And okay. this is Glasgow, June 12th because the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, right? right? Glasgow. What, we got experience. Ireland coming up. We're going to, John's going to make flyers today. Nice. Yeah. All right. Rosebud, what do you have to promote? Yeah, Rosebud, tell us where you're going to be. I'm going to be announcing my new tour uh, April 10th. So you can follow me at Rosebud Baker on Instagram, Twitter, and then rosebudbaker.com for days. What are some of the cities? Uh, I can't remember. Come on. I can't. I really. <laughs> <laughs> tell us one. I'm going to announce. I'll, I'll announce on the 10th. Yeah, but, but I, I want to get people such a, excited. That's such a funny way to try to get, gain more information. I know. What's the cities? I don't know. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Please. What do you think? You think you'll be in uh, Dallas? Uh, no. Seattle. You think you'll be in Pittsburgh? Oh, Seattle. Yes. Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yep. I think so. New York? No. DC. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm filming the second half of my special in New York. Where? Where? At the cellar. Nice. What do you mean the second half? You're splitting it up? Yeah. So I'm doing the first half pregnant. Second half is a uh, year after I've had the kid. I love that idea. Yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. Cuz cuz I think that that's different and original. Yeah, thank you. And it's like it's like in the first half you were pregnant with your special and the second half you gave birth to it. Yeah. And that's what that will reflect on the jokes. That's, the first half I'll say it. The first she was, half they'll she was go, baking this. They'll go she was doing the best and she could. And then the second half I was like now the special was born she should just make it these last 20 minutes cuz I hated the first 40. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to cut between I think. That's awesome. I don't know how I'm going to edit it. It's going to be an editing. That's nightmare. awesome. I I love it. Yeah, I love that. Too. I I love that idea, and I wish we could. But we're we're biological men, which sucks. <laughs> we're biological. Tough hand, weird dealt. Yeah, it really was, man. Yeah, but you're doing well with it. You're doing well with. Show everyone your hand. Show them your thumb. Oh yeah. Thanks somebody for calling this out on Instagram. I have oh one God. thumb that's shorter than Look the at other. Look, my one of my it's me and Megan Fox. Yep. Ensign A. Latham from uh, Love and Basketball. There you go. Look, Look those at that. are short. Stubby thumbs. Yeah, it's real a toe. And uh, it sucks. It Got does look like a toe. It sure does. Does. It looks like Stop AI Stop staring printed. at it. That's why all my pictures, I'm typically like dude, this. Dude, literally, like, since I was a Mike, kid, put dude. your thumb up again. That thumb looks like the Iron Lung's head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it like bends back like a weird huh. thing. It's wow. weird. Yeah, it's the same. Yeah, I couldn't psychotic. dribble that well with my right hand. It is you psychotic. Look, it's like the cartoon Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Psychotic. You know? What? You know those the cartoon Ed, Ed, and Eddie? No. No? Yeah. Yes. They have square, they have square hands. Right, but Megan they also Fox have, has they it. Also Pull have it up. that shaped head. Pull it up. Pull, Pull up it Megan up. Fox thumb. Comparing yourself to Megan Fox, brave. Why? So brave. We have the same thing. No, I just, that girl from Love is Blind just got in a lot of trouble for that. Oh, yeah. Well, she also, her head looked like she had gigantic. She probably looked something. like Megan Fox. She thumb. looked like Megan oh. Fox yeah. if Ugh. Megan Fox was George Mirasan. See, look at that. I like Yikes. it, though. Yikes. I wow. like it. Yeah, me and her. Me and Meg. All right. Mike, where are you going to be? Uh, MikeCannonComedy.com for tickets. I'm going to be in Uncasville March 21st through the 23rd at uh, Comics Roadhouse. Then the special, April 6th. There's a few tickets left. Those are running out. MikeCannonComedy.com or ChristyComedy.com. Uh, two shows, April 6th. And then I'll be in Emmaus, Pennsylvania with uh, me, Feeney, and Sagalo are doing our yearly gig together. Oh, it should yeah. be a good time. <laughs> Look at oh, your yeah. face. Oh, yeah. I don't remember that. Uh, that'll be fun. And then May, I'm going to be in Poughkeepsie and uh, more dates at MikeCannonComedy.com. Look at that. We'll all be there. Vito and John, you can catch them at City Field. Um, <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. You, you can't say that. You can catch them at Slam Magazine headquarters where we're coming to you from. And uh, yeah. ChristyComedy.com. We got new merch up there. You call the voicemails if you want to get involved. Patreon.com slash Christy Comedy, where half of this episode will probably be. <laughs> and, um, and where we just say wild shit and I'll we'll take more edibles and we'll have more fun. This is uh and yeah, John's got shorts on. <laughs> <laughs>
Tom Segura.